Hello everyone, welcome to Kaleem Open number 2. I'm gonna be casting this as your host along with Mr. Super Blizzard. How are you doing today, Super Blizzard? Hi. I'm here. I'm here with you. Here, That's, uh, ready to shine. We took I'm, a little I'm bit ready to... to uh, let's do this. I've been not involved in the tournament scene for some time. Or well, actually no. just semi-involved. But let's let's see what the these players have to say. It's a very... There's anything they can bring to the table that may surprise us. Zoni, of course, very experienced. Seshimara already established as well in the Farrier scene. And, uh, you know, he, he likes to play his blue. Zoni, on the other hand, he's, he's got quite the uh, palette here of decks that he could uh, muster up. I'm, I'm excited to see what, what lineup he will end up deciding on. Yeah, we got a big tournament here, 12 player tournament, such a large number for yeah. our humble little fairy community. Oof. And uh, Now in the tens? Oh, oof. Yeah. I'm getting all frisky here, I'm not, I'm not used to handling those numbers. <laughs> <laughs> it's too much for the lizard brain. Yeah. Well, we're going no, to... No, all of us aside, very, very, very pleasant surprise here. Yeah. Um, so for our first match we picked out here, this is the top 16. Yeah. We're in the round of yeah. 16 in this match actually. So this is going to be best of three. Um, let's take a look at their lists now. So best of three means that one list is not going to be used at all. So players are going to have to make a little bit uh, more of a decision on what list they want to be playing in this match as opposed to the best of five where you get to use all your lists, well three of them. Exactly. And due to the nature of this uh, ban and pick phase, counterpicking plays a very important role. And also the mind games can sometimes be uh, interesting to speculate on, you know, what will my opponent ban? What then entices me to take a certain ban? And right now it looks like Zorni has a pretty, uh, pretty well-rounded lineup. Does bring a green deck, which of course is favored into red and then has a blue green as well which is also favored into red also favored into green and doesn't have the worst time against blue as well so some some very solid all-round uh picks here for zorni uh, sesh on the double blue lists uh, it could be a bit risky for sesh if he doesn't take out zorni's red list and then zorni takes the pen on the green which would Make make Sasha's life miserable. Yeah, you know, and you have to really adapt to that. Um, what if my opponent is banning the green? Actually, which yeah. I think is the correct ban here. Um, Predicting again, bans is very huge in this matchup, and I think you're right. The yeah. green ban does make a lot of sense in this particular situation. Just because your red is set up to uh, potentially three zero your opponent, if you're confident in the red mirror as well. That also plays a big role. Um, so yeah, could just be a green ban. Um, depending on how confident you are in your own green list or how greedy your own green list is, that also makes sense. Does go for the blue ban instead. So maybe Zorni was anticipating a red ban from Sash. Uh, that could have been potential. Uh, though again, it's, it's a bit difficult uh, to really make anything of either of these two blue lists they are just uh, mm -hmm, on I the agree. surface very very uh, similar they might do okay identical against green twinsies. yeah <laughs> <laughs> and when they're identical lists you kind of have to make some sacrifices between cards so they can be less than a blue deck potentially but maybe there are enough blue cards that Sesh is happy with both of these lists yeah so maybe Zoni wasn't really confident in his green list, um, mm. beating either green or, of, of course, blue. Blue shouldn't be... Right, uh, I think this might be, be a having green... having much of a hard time dealing with green. It could be green ramp, because I think that's what Zorni brought last time. And green ramp might yeah. suffer a little bit more to blue, I don't know. It's yeah. a little more tempo-oriented. It, it would be okay in the green mirror, because it's uh, usually greedier and then mm -hmm. wins because of that. Um, but again, Zorni just uh, probably looking to take out the one bad matchup and then 
maybe scout with his own green list um, to potentially snipe the opponent's green or red. Though I don't think Sash would open red necessarily. Mm. Yeah, yeah, unlikely. It's usually a counter pick. Uh, Zorni actually hanging on to the Celestial Tower here. That's pretty cool. Celestial Tower is a very nice early game pick, but uh, we see he gets punished hard by no opening creatures. Yeah, that's tough. Ooh. And look at that. Sesh coming down with the Lost Explorer. Turn already one. establishing collection turn one. And if if I'm not mistaken, this could just be uh, my list, my green aggro slash mid-range hybrid, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. I don't define myself by your puny categories. No, it's, <laughs> this is a different beast. And yeah, the Verdant Force is a fairly decent creature to put on early pressure here as well. Uh, just picks up a command. I think Sesh tech that. Um, uh, I, I told him Tower is better, but yeah. It's, we, mm. we had a debate. We had a small debate. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, Barter does find some value here. Otherwise, that would have been a dead card in that matchup. Uh, Tethra actually huge pickup here. A Manta Rider for Zorni. It's a it's creature. A bit late. It's a bit it's a late, creature, but, but it's a bit late. Yeah. So, being a creature, you know, that's not too bad after all. We were desperate for a creature, but yeah, that Tethra is going to cause some that damage. That is true. Um, and yeah. You probably are looking to establish right side collection, just because you're very vulnerable in this position uh, since you don't have any follow up. Unless... Uh, that's why I wouldn't consider trading the uh, Lost Explor Explorer here, for example. Unless he considers double events into this, and then he's got a Manta Rider on board that he can establish initiative with, plus the Celestial Tower. Oh. Yeah, but see, the problem here is if you're if you're already fighting left side, um, you're struggling for you're levels. You're very vulnerable if if that one Manta Rider dies, and you're already behind in collections. This Lost Explorer has collected twice, which is massive. So now by contesting this side, you're running into the risk of just being outstatted by green, and you're also needlessly playing into trade range, whereas you could have potentially just set up a right side collection and, you know, hung out yeah. there for a while. This might not actually be trade range because Sesh actually only has two forests here. The so Horsemaster and Grove Collar are not options. Yeah, not this turn at least. Yeah. Um, let's see if he greets into the nightmare. That would be super Ooh. bad if he self buffs. Uh, I don't think he will though. Yeah, it's probably no. going to be the explorer he's here. Spreading, yeah, he's spreading. He is aware of the command, so he knows there's an answer. That's true. But this lost explorer is still pretty beefy, you know? Still yeah. does a good job. And Zorni bricked here. More Though the night playable is, cards. Night uh, is such a good answer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, still such a good answer, the nightmare here. Uh, yeah, Zorni <laughs> actually still establishing quite a presence. That Tethra blew out Sesh's entire fairy pool there. Yeah. I wonder if it might have just been better to set up a virgin force. Um, just because it's cheaper. Yeah, and Tethra's more of a even like reactive play. Yeah. Yeah. Could have uh, saved the buff for later. So really lucky for Zorni here that he could uh, get out. And now it's just a question of initiative. Uh, Sesh yeah. will lose this Lost Explorer to the Soul Drain. And then I think Zorni is in the lead. And there's not I think much so. Sesh can do to answer that. Um, he's not going to be able to play a champion here. I guess he's just going to draw for a playable creature. Oh, you can't even do that because you need to soul drain here. Um, do you ever double soul drain? Step on the forest? So the problem is if you double soul... Oh, that's so bad. Another barter. Ooh. Oh, he's going to he's gonna he's really gonna go for it. regret putting uh, command in the deck after this game. <laughs> <laughs> Yuck. Oh, dear. I think you just trade here, you don't drain, right? I think so. Um, with Sash on very low mana. Yeah, and you want to be on champion next turn, regardless of what happens. 
Yeah, there's always the consideration to step onto the forest to prevent any creatures there, but uh, I think with Zornia's hand and the, the way the game is going, Sesh probably wants to play creatures passively. He's probably fine with playing creatures passively anyways. Yeah. Uh, and we save these soul drains for future damage. Ay, ay, ay. Ay, caramba. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going well. It's it, it was going well in the beginning, though. It uh, was, then, and yeah. Sony just got a Yellow huge tempo happened. swing. It takes the tower here. Yeah. I'm not sure if I like that. I think I would have preferred the champion. Champion would have been pretty uh, this nice. This allows for emissary double collection. I guess. That's fair. You also target the third, uh, the second forest. I think it's just better to have the, uh, well, Sash should draw for a shrine here. Um, I think it's better to have the champion on board, to be honest. But the mm. tower isn't really accomplishing much. You, I think you would favor the mobility here just because, oh, I don't like this play. <laughs> what is this play? You just dead to a flyer. Yeah, that's interesting. Uh, Oh, that can't be right. <laughs> Maybe Sash is feeling a little desperate, or a little, uh, uh, a sure little lost. Is, but even if you're feeling desperate, I think your line is draw for shrine and, just and try to get a bird run to stick. Yeah. But... Yeah. Unlikely, uh, but yeah. Oh. Robin salt in the wound. Nice. <laughs> Sneaky Very creative line. use of the tower. <laughs> I like it. Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, we were able That's to get a collection off of that. And that does look like it's going to be it. Sesh is going to throw in the towel. And that is game one I'm of the watch. best of three series, which is very huge for Zorni. He's only going to win one yeah. more match to win the whole series. And owning so the flyers list. To... Yeah, go ahead. I was just gonna say owning the fly flyers list. I think he's feeling pretty good about that. Um, so I think what Sash has to do here is um, you have to pick blue and hope that you win. I because if agree. You're picking, if you're picking red, you will guarantee it lose versus the green. And I think I would feel more confident going into a red with my blue than mm -hmm. I would with my red into the green, you know? Yeah. Uh, so if you're, if you're planning green. to win the next match, this is the correct play. If you're planning to win the series, I think you have to pick a bit riskier and go for the blue list. Even yeah. if the blue list has a slightly worse matchup into yellow, uh, I think you, just have, you have to go for it, essentially. Yeah, red definitely decent against the fly uh, good against the Flyers, but uh, yeah. Uh, like Lizard said, we want to be thinking about our future matches. There was a Bomb Slinger we saw, there's a Fire Elemental. Maybe he's feeling confident these high attack creatures can uh, choke out that green. Not as confident in the blue versus red, I don't know. Um, it depends. Oh, it looks like oh. it's Rush. So Rush indeed might have a bit of a higher chance against uh, green. Fair enough. If it's, if it's the greedy green, especially with the ramp. Yeah. And Rush might just be the way. He's looking at Fire Elemental, Flame Bursts. Yeah, that's, that's solid. Yeah, we uh, were... I would have liked to see a best of five here, actually. <laughs> <It's kind> of... <laughs> it would have been interesting, yeah. It's always sad yeah. with the uh, earlier rounds, best of three. Uh, yeah. Especially for the players, because they don't get to uh, rock, paper, scissors it out all the way. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And you want to go all the way. Mm. Uh, that being said, this X grinder, he went all the way. He and did is now go all the way. 5 4 as a result. What a play. Very excellent. Nightmare not going to help so much in this. No. Uh, yeah, that's a bit of an unfortunate hand here for Zorni. He really is looking for Soul Dragons uh, and not the double flash went hand. And going second as flyers, especially brutal. 
since you you really starved for lands early on, and this is the window where your opponent can, you know, exude the most pressure, and you will not likely be able to provide an answer here. Um, you could flash when to take out the grinder, but it doesn't really accomplish a ton. Um, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah, like you're gonna take ten to the face if you don't do anything, which. Maybe that's what we go for, and just I don't know. I think he's potentially I, debating taking a draw. Taking ten versus uh, Oh, ouch! Yeah, that's a brick. Ouch! And this can be an issue sometimes with flyers lists, uh, especially in deck building. There's a lot of yeah. really good flyer cards that are high land. And if you include too many, they can sometimes clutter your deck. You have to be really, uh, really uh, acknowledging of the fact that your your land cost is that high. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even cards like Nightmare have dead matchups, and that's why you wouldn't run them, right? Yeah. Um, it's also a question of what specific decks you want to counter. Um, for example, green usually has a bad time versus yellow, so you're less inclined to include something like Last Nightmare in your list for that reason. Mm -hmm. um, it's still okay to run it, but I don't think it's needed. So I think what you would want to do is you'd rather pivot into or lean to the matchups that um, you're feeling a bit weaker against, right? Yeah, definitely. So that's also one of the reasons why I checked Azerai in my flyers list, for example. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It like also gives you, uh, like, imagine you have an Azurai in this spot instead of the Nightmare. It gives you way more breathing room in terms of, you know, your opponent's clock. Mm -hmm. And it lets you um, apply a ton of pressure by, you know, pushing 10 to the face. Yeah, the Nightmare. I remember running Nightmare in recent past just to counter, like, Firebringers that were super popular and, uh, like, Disciples and such. But overall, it's not going to make a huge difference. Your attack, your high attacking bodies do a pretty good yeah. job. I think even even uh, disciples and firebringers, while sometimes they can high roll, uh, flyers usually should be favored just because of um, the insane innate scaling that you have in your flyers. Yeah. So you have uh, five damage for three, uh, at least. Usually, that's what you end up with. And then if you add another fly on top of that, you have 10 damage for 6. So yeah, it's, 10 damage. it's really a great engine if you think about it in terms of uh, stats, you know? 10 damage for the same price as Nightmare. That's that's a lot of damage. Exactly. <laughs> and your Nightmare can collect. <laughs> yeah. That's another upside. Yeah, Nightmare has just really been outclassed recently. I'm not even sure why. Well, it used to be run a lot in the past. Maybe because Mono Green was more popular. Nightmare wasn't really run in the past as well. Oh, okay. Uh, at least in, in my opinion, it was more of a um, of a meta check. So, uh, just due to you know the existence of Nightmare as a card, you would have to think twice about running cards like Croc uh, mm. or Magnus. Or Beiru even, because all of those were really expensive, and getting those nightmares usually ends up in, you know, a net loss for you. So, it, it's always been in that spot where it forced the meta into a certain direction, but at the same time, um, you know, playing your deck to uh, um, to an extent where you don't necessarily have to lose to a nightmare is uh, what what sculpted uh, the meta from there on, on. So Nightmare ironically got worse because no one was playing into Nightmare again. Right. Um, so yeah, that's always been the cycle of the dynamic between those two. Yeah, it's tough to get six Faria worth of value. You really gotta be running like Virgin forces and such and even then you're only trading even. <laughs> yeah. So unless you're playing a hard control list in which case you really don't care that much about value, you care about deck weight and being able to answer all the threats. It's it's not very common to run Nightmare anymore. Mm. Uh, so now the red 
red list versus the red list. Sony really respecting the strength of uh, Sasha's rush. Yeah. Though he's not picking green, yeah, which is that's, surprising. That is a very surprising pick. Um, and, you know, I think I may agree with it, depending on what's in Zorni's list there. If it's yeah. super slow, uh, like he's brought it to the pass, then yeah, this might be the better pick. Yeah, yeah, let's see. Uh, Shaker, amazing versus Rush. Uh, Cypher's Wrath as well. Great to deal with the Fire Elemental. And the turn one collector, what could you ask for? Yeah. yeah what more could you excellent. ask for here? Yeah. And we see Sesh uh, gonna drop these fire elementals probably to get an axe grinder spot, just like he did last turn. Uh, and this time we got an answer. We do, we do. Well, Cypher is another big threat here. And no removal in Zoni's hand, uh, in Sesh's hand, sorry. Yeah. So, might just be. A very difficult time. Yeah, debating where to place this next mountain, I think to the side is fine. Um, you know, yeah. you saw Sesh's play last game, where he went fire early to the well. That could be an option this game as well. And yeah, we're just gonna go for that. Yeah, and steps the axe grinder back here so he has another uh, body to trade with. Uh, that's very heads up because you're, you know, you're anticipating the elemental plus the grinder, but probably, probably, um, oh, that's a brigand. So this lands up perfect for for Zorni. He now gets to develop his shaker plus wrath and gets to take a full clear if Sash mm. should go for the brigand. Um, I think grinder is grinder the. Gets yeah. yeah. I think Grinder is a better play. pick. Like, you also play into Flame Burst with. <laughs> there's the Flame Burst. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we got Flame Burst Ground Shaker as well, but. Uh... I mean, you can so, do a full clear. It's, it's tricky here, right? Because it you're is. essentially foregoing two whole for collections by taking that trade. Mm -hmm. And I think. If I was Zoni, I would have valued not clearing the grinder and then just body blocking with the cipher and collecting with the X grinder from the left side. Well, I think I'm on I think board with that play as well. Up way too many collections this way. Mm -hmm. Because this also means you're not collecting. <laughs> but yeah. uh, we and might be okay. I I think I don't like the second fundamental here. It Sesh might have to read that there's no Cypher's Wrath, but uh, that's, that's not necessarily always the play here. Yeah, we saw a Flame Burst, so maybe that's what made him a bit confident in it. Yeah, uh, yeah. But there's just so much removal from Zorni Red. Yeah, Zorni has a really good line here, stepping on the mountain and then getting to develop a Brigand. So, securing the double collection again, and that should be it. Yeah, this is going to be near impossible for Sash to come Actually, back from. With the Flame Burst and the Brigand, Sash has a good time here. I think you had to clear WoW. Well, That's insane. Really? No Flame you Burst. You had to Flame Burst this Brigand, yeah. Yeah, that just seems like an autoplay. I don't know why he's holding it. Uh, really yeah, wants I to guess use he's copter. looking for AOE value, but I just want to play for face, yeah, I think. Uh, yeah, with the flame burst, like, you remove any threats that Zorni can really put down here. Like, there's no taunts, probably, you're expecting from Zorni's yeah, list. Yeah. He's got a neutral prayer here, he can't possibly block both these spaces. Horsemaster could come, but, I mean, if Horsemaster you can comes, then, on yeah, you really can't. At this point, you're in a spot where you have to just take your risks and play accordingly. Mm -hmm. um, I think his line of thinking was he's uh, opting for the copter value. Yeah, I think so. But well. um, I'm, I'm not sure if that wins you the game in this spot. Mm -hmm. I think you just had to bank on the econ of Brigand carrying you and going all in. Yeah, I think so. Now the cipher. That's a problem. That is a big <laughs> problem. And 
I don't think uh, Zorni had enough area to play that if the brigand was cleared, right? Yeah, he he would have been down. Um, he would have been on four wheel. actually, so that there was a plus one, I guess. Right. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention to the power wheel. I wasn't sure if he drew there. But but even so, you want to limit your opponent's options, right? Yeah, if, definitely. If Zorni gets the draw and finds a bomb slinger here, that would be terrible. So you really want to force uh, force your opponent to you know do the work in this spot. Yeah, he could have even drawn four cipher. <laughs> and we're in the same situation. Yeah, but now it's way worse. <laughs> yeah. You're just pushing two here. Oh, it's awful. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Flame oh, Flameburst Copter? What? what is happening? Oh, that's too much respect. I don't know if you can give that cipher this much respect. Oh. Uh. Well, uh, this there is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> there wasn't really another play that was there. Hit face. I, I think you just. Shaker. I, I I don't know what this play does though. You're not setting up for face. Maybe there was an avenue if you hit face and then you um you swarm left side maybe. Mm. Right, because the shaker is still in collection. At that point you could have just flame busted the brigand again, uh played an aggressive axe grinder, pushed face for two, and then the cipher can only clear one creature. And at that point you're at least looking a lot stronger in in terms of you know left side mm. which of course you're losing eventually as well but uh, at least you're giving yourself an out for finding burn more the burn maybe or mm. developing more whereas this, is... this line it doesn't really add much i think it's just an even trade that's fair. This is going to be really tough for Sesh to come back on board. I don't think he's going to be able to manage with Zorni gaining all this fairy every turn. Yeah. So yeah, in, in tough positions like this, you have to try and create an imbalance on board so that you're, you're stronger on one side, at least temporarily. Mm. And then that may translate into a win, but also not always. It's not a guarantee, right? Yeah, but at least it gives you a way to salvage a situation that would otherwise be uh, completely lost. Yeah, you want to play to your outs. The potential wins, even if it's a small chance. Now there's a next boss coming up. It's, it's a bit bigger than Zornix boss, but I right against the doubt stats. it will. Actually... Huh, so interesting. You're gonna have to top deck something. Just a tiny bit uh, awkward. Ah, sad. <laughs> that, this was like Sasha's one hope. Have we found the wrath? Yeah. Like maybe getting two hits off the boss and then getting a good copter, right? That's. Yeah, that would have been pretty nice if this uh, boss could survive. But alas, the boss is dead. Alas. And we have a Baldurian coming up next turn. So. Ding dong, the boss is dead. <laughs> <laughs> Spite Sprite. All right. Oh no, he's gotta win. Singular Sprite. <laughs> for the win. <laughs> Let's see it. <laughs> Sash is gonna go down with class. He is, he is. Uh... Zorni here, not sure what to do. He's spooked. Yeah. Yeah, I have no idea. Sprite's too much to handle. I think he's just uh, giving Sash's hand more credit than he should be. He's probably thinking about Garadon. Um, mm. Some form of wonky double AoE, perhaps. But really, that's just a lonely copter sitting there and a next grand out of Cyphers. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Not uh, much going on. It's match point, so I guess Zorni really wants to win this. 
But yeah, with the Tyrion in hand, it's uh, that's that's real chunky. It's kind of hard to answer. Gonna put him in a spot that can contest as many lands as possible. And hold spec on the Harrod. Um. Which is fair, but also we probably one, irrelevant. Yeah, we got one discount, but uh, I mean, yeah. All right, Sesh, can we clear the Baldurion? I don't think so. <laughs> so we will see the hammer come down. We will. We will. It's hammer time. It's hammer time. It's been a while since I've, since I've said that, but yeah. It's hammer <laughs> time again. It's always nice seeing a Bulgarian in a red list. Yeah, yeah. And Zorni with some kind of like off meta picks as well, even with the uh, ogre. Don't see the ogre very uh, often either. I, I, I think it's uh, it's more common than you would think. Oh, really? I have Teddy yet Joker to see. Joker played a lot of ogre in his red list. Uh, but yeah, if you look at Baldurian, it's always, uh, you know, it, it looks like such an impressive card once it comes down. Mm. But if you take into consideration what happened prior and how much you actually had to spend on, you know, making that fifth mountain and getting it down, then corrupting, it's it's quite the expensive card. And to be fair, I think Zorni would have long won or even had a more decisive win if he would have just been able to draw and use up all his extra resources that he generated over time. Yeah, versus, that's you know, fair. getting the one hammer. Uh, you'd be pretty happy with three mountains on the in this entire list. Probably two for the most part until you draw into Cypher or Ground Shaker. Yeah, uh, exactly. Those other two lands just... almost make Bulgarian seven cost if you debate plus ones. Uses just yeah. the power wheel. Well, one draw is also equivalent to one uh, ferry, in my opinion. So, mm -hmm. there's, uh, yeah, there's something to be said about Baldurian. Um, no discount for the ogre, but Zoni doesn't really care. <laughs> yeah, we've <laughs> got. And what more setup could you want? Yeah, triple collection, two aggro creatures. And now, a boss is coming back. Well played goes out from Sash, and that should be it. Ties the serious Zorni with his red list over the green pick, which you know we concluded would be optimal. But Zorni knows his list better than we do, and yeah. he reaps the benefits of it. Yeah, really clever pick from Zorni, not taking the classic green. Uh, so Zorni's going to move on to top eight top eight already oh my wow. we have a finalist almost wow. top eight i'm gonna show <laughs> off the uh the brackets real quick so uh this was the top 16 we got a couple yeah. other matches going on in that bracket and then in set in a uh, top eight we've already got fickle and phantom uh, Zorni is going to move on to fight Sabo. That's going to be another interesting match. Sabo's uh, quite an established player as well. Yes, yes. He always brings uh, some very, very funky lineups and has a, yeah. has a way around his cards, you know? Definitely, it's definitely. It's always a joy to watch and to play against as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so maybe we follow over Zorni. I think uh, Fickle is streaming on his own channel, so we don't need to... Uh, go to that match. Canuck may also be streaming. I know he streams sometimes. Um, yeah, let's just uh, bit. follow. I, I, I'll, I'll let you lead the direction. I'm very clueless here, as always. <laughs> um, but yeah, Supple vs. Sony sounds like an absolute banger of a match. I'd be lucky to, you know, witness that go down. Well, let's do it. I'll invite Zorni Great. right back again. We're going to make him work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And that was a short match. I'm sure Zorn doesn't though. need any breaks. Oh, I need to invite you too. Yeah. I think I jump trip too early. Okay, he wants a comfort break. Comfort break. Okay, guys. It's gonna leave us. Let's take a comfort break for comfort's sake. Comfort um. break for comfort's sake. That sounded wonderful, not only in my head, but also when it came out. You know, sometimes you have those uh, elegant wordplays, and they sound super sophisticated. You gotta love when, when you they try come to out them, good, yeah? You, you know, when you try to utter them, the other person is just like, what, what were you trying to say? What exactly do you think <laughs> was going to happen there? Yeah, yeah sometimes this time you gotta smell this out. <laughs> A okay. comfort break for comfort's sake. I think on that token, I'll take a comfort break as well, at least a small one. I'll set up a cup of coffee, cup of joes, for my, uh, my sake. Sounds and good. Yeah, let's you just... Guys, you, you guys are free to, you know, dip into your soggy pops and what have you not. <laughs> soggy pops. It. It's yeah. bad time. All right. What do you have in Canada? Is there any, any we national have drinks? Pops. Coke yeah. is very popular. Um, like the drug wait, wait, snort. Coke. No. <laughs> but yeah. uh, Let's take a short yeah. break, guys. We'll be right back with some hot farrier action. We'll be back. All right. All right, we're back. So we're on to the top eight, best of eight. We got Zorni and Sabo. Another great matchup for you guys. And we all have our coffees and snacks yes, and soda pups. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just confirm. All right, we're good to go. Best of five this time. So we are going to get to see all lists. And wow, Ooh. wow, Sabo, so definitely bringing a spicy lineup here. We see a Belgian yeah, cover, not holding back anything. No, he's. He's just looking to grind out these games. <laughs> um, Zorni, on the other hand, we are a bit more familiar with. Uh, we have seen so far two of his four decks being the yellow and the red. So there's only two surprises left in the box, but we will see how much surprise uh, is actually left in those <laughs> lists as well. So, Sabo, what, what are we thinking here? You've got I'm... your red blue, your two actually. Oh, that's interesting. Two red yellow lists and a mono red list. What's yeah, your take, man? I'm so I'm thinking the red blue is going to be Sirocco. There is one dual colored card in this list. So I'm excited to see that. Oh, Zorni says no. Oh. We're not allowed to have fun. <laughs> no, Sirocco. So then the red yellows have got to be angry and then it could mm. also be mid-range, you know, those those weird red-yellow mid-range lists have always been around, never quite as good, what would but be the... <laughs> they've been around nonetheless. <laughs> what would be um, the dual-colored card, though? Like, Crystal Spice? One of uh, Crystal Thunder, Spice? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Probably I thought you were Thunder, talking yeah. about the red-blue. Oh, no, red, no, no. no red-yellow, yeah. That would that yeah. could make sense. Um, red-yellow piles have a long tradition in Ferrier. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, Amoeba built that uh, red, yellow, what did he call it, the Soleil? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that could be an option. I think we'll cool. see Angry. Angry is super popular. I would be surprised if yes, one of them is. wasn't Angry. Uh, I'm going to lock in the red ban. Zorni is locking in that and red yeah. blue. Zorni is just really happy, you know, having brought two green lists. Yeah. I'm surprised Sabo <laughs> didn't ban either the green list, actually. It's, uh, it's sort of a... Um, I, I, I guess you're already accepting defeat, just in some case. <laughs> but um, twice. You I, would, I would really have banned the mono green, I think. Because mm -hmm. that's, that's going to be so troublesome for you. Yeah, um, and Zorni's super confident with this. He's just going to start off right the bat with the uh, mono yeah, green list. Yeah. Uh, we might and see a 3 sweep. to do that as well. I don't want to give uh, Zorni too much credit, but mono green into red, it kind of hurts. 
Um, so maybe maybe Sabo is indeed on two uh, two angry lists. So he's thinking my firebringers will outscale you. Hmm. Um, but that depends, you know. It's it's not always guaranteed, and some of these lists also run Voice of Truth. So there's yeah. that. And being being red yellow, you're also arguably a lot slower. <laughs> and wow, what a Ooh. what a weak hand for for Zorni here. Yeah, Zorni and actually hanging Sabo, on to Dord, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Sabo is not rushing here, but he he, he should be. He might. I'd have to yeah. consider that. He uh, doesn't know Zoni's hand, of course, but if, if you're not rushing, if you're not putting any on any pressure up until turn, what, three, five, four, you're in a really tough spot here. Yeah, giving Zorni all the time in the world to draw the cards he needs, play down these creatures. Um, And if Sabo was paying attention to the last tournament, he might know that this is a, a slower... Uh, green list, in which case he definitely wants to be rushing this. Uh, see, Zorni just has nothing playable. If the rush had come, uh, I don't know what Zorni would do here. He just has actually nothing. <laughs> actually nothing playable, yeah. <laughs> Man, that would have been a different game for sure. Yeah, we're going to be able to develop the Zorni, I mean, this uh, Dordia that uh, Zorni uh, kept yeah, in his opening. Let's develop the Zorni. <laughs> <laughs> Zorni, yeah. Teleport to an adjacent yeah. tournament. Teleport to the adjacent tournament. <laughs> Excellent. All right. It's it's looking like he's prioritizing right side here. I think he's concerned about Horsemaster. That's why he doesn't want to explore. Mm. And that's a fair, uh, fair assessment here. The Sabo is just really slow here. He doesn't doesn't have anything to apply a ton of pressure. He does get the collections in, but you know it's green. It's it's probably not mattering after the first golem comes down. Yeah, it really is not gonna like this one golem is uh, alone is gonna cause so many problems. Like Sabo yeah. does have answers of course, but it's just gonna be so expensive to deal with. For only five fairy investment from Zorni. If Zorni was really concerned about a horse master, he could even choose to block that line by creating a forest. Um, uh, oh. In between the brigand and the uh, face, you know, and uh, what is that? Like C5? Yeah, C5. But he's probably not even priced into doing that. If if a horse master comes down, that means no aggression. Yeah. So no follow-up mountain aggressive. Yeah, and I don't think that's it's just pretty fine for you. And yeah, so we turn just for the Alright. If you double flame burst here, you're not winning the game. Oh, this I is so bad. I think you go <laughs> for it though, right? Because... Dordi is just going to get out of hand. It's just, uh, Flame Burst is such a useful tool to close out the game it is, if it you is. have any potential chance at winning. So, he. See, he can't really afford to do that, in my opinion. That is very it expensive to go for double ends here. It's, it's not so much about you know being very efficient, because right now Sabo is very, very efficient. You need to be card He's got efficient. all the barriers to work with, he's collected. <laughs> Mm -hmm. But as soon as Zorni develops his uh, golem here, it's just... it's over. Yeah. No efficient stats. And um, maybe if you hit in the Herald, you can get one extra stat on the boss, but... Yeah. Uh, we see Guidance also, in Zorni's hands. Yeah. But also notice how this curve worked out perfect for Zorni. Even without a collection, he's now able to develop a Kodama and a Thyrian golem. True. Because he kept the Explorer. And this is something not a lot of people tend to do, I think, is, uh, you know, really uh, planning out your turns in advance. I don't know if Zorni was planning out in advance, but, um, you know, I, at least... I think he's just got to roll with the cards that he got, but yeah, let's... We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> it's, it's nice to know how the numbers Oof. line up. And Explore being so crucial here for the Golem development. And that's also why I wouldn't... Uh, why well, I wouldn't advise the clear on Wardia there? Um, just because 
Zony always has this option of play, no matter what happens. That's As now, fair. um, <clears throat> but yeah, typically, like in the end game, uh, for the red versus green matchup, you're going to get outvalued. Um, but ideally, you want to get some early hits into the face and then close the game out with flame burst. But how the progression yeah. of the game will go now is even if, like, Sabo might get some face slaps here. He might not even. <laughs> but if he does, um, he might get Zorni down to some amount of life, but then eventually Zorni's going to be able to just drop so many big bodies, Sabo yeah. can't even get in there. And then no more flame bursts left. That's going to be real tough. But, uh, it looks just yeah. like a three hour here. That's a three hour angle. But I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna call the shots too early. Um. <laughs> yeah, things can always happen. Things can always change in the blink of an eye. We don't yeah. know what those red yellow he, lists are. Maybe he really is on the double angry and does just scoot over, over the mono green and does angry things. Yeah, we haven't seen any uh, Voice of Truth so far from Zorni's list. Uh, we've seen uh, not too many cards, maybe like almost half the list. But Durian is interesting though. Mm, don't think it will be enough, but it's interesting yeah. nonetheless. And this is one of the um, the situations you can be in as the mono green player, where the red player has a chance, and that is, um, you know, being able to outswarm green and maneuvering out, uh, maneuvering around the uh, single target threats that green uh, poses often. Mm -hmm. So it's it's not so much a, a war of, uh, you know, stats. And in this case, the red player just try to force his tempo lines and uh, somehow sneak in a few points of damage. Yeah. Uh, Bloom Sprite almost perfect, but <laughs> it would have been awesome if we could just use the Bloom Sprite to defend this Bomb Slinger. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, um, it's probably just Kodama here, I think. Yeah, I think. Oh, actually going for a draw, though. I liked the Kodama. I mean, solid you can still body. Play the but... Kodama? Oh, right. You don't... You're collecting, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Wood Alley's pretty useless. Um, since we do have this Kodama that's probably coming down, we already are at our 10 land requirement for the tree. Oh, actually, considering the Wood Alley, though. Oh, that's bad, though, right? Isn't it? It's four so expensive. Fair, yeah. For a 2 yeah. 4 body. Yeah, I think it's a bit expensive. He might, he might uh, want to set up the Bloom Sprite as well. But. Hmm. I don't think I agree here. He's really concerned about the uh, Brigand hitting face, you know, the Bomb Slinger hitting, hitting into the Golem and then Brigand making short notice. Yeah, though um, that would require a Flame Burst, which <laughs> Zorni seen two yeah. of so far. Yeah. I, I guess Shaker uh, Wrath is what he's concerned about. Then again, uh, Shaker would have probably come down earlier. Yeah. So maybe a bit too too cautious here on the wood elemental. It's usually just enough to pile on stats as green. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah, this is really expensive for the stat investment you're getting back. Uh, when you don't need that forest, also, like, the land generation is almost irrelevant. Unless you're planning on never playing the Kodama, but... Uh, that relies on top decking chunky creatures. Yeah. Oh. Oh. <laughs> what? Oh. No, Zoni. Unfair top deck. <laughs> Gee. Oh, poor Sabo. <laughs> Just top decking the perfect answer. <laughs> and you even, you even take the guidance here to take a value trade. Yeah. Brutal. Absolutely. So, I don't know, I guess that would Ellie paying off in terms of tempo, because he had the Faria to spend on Kodama, on the uh, Skywill Guidance there. 
I mean, not necessarily. Kodama probably wins here either way. Also fair. I mean, it's just more stats, right? More raw stats. Yep, and Sabo just gonna surrender there. Uh, pretty yep. impossible from that position. Two flame bursts down. That's gonna be rough. So we'll move on to yet another red match. So this one's got, what, uh, 29... Three cards? Dual colored? Uh, one could be max. I mean, there's so many options in red, yellow, right? Right. So Grinder usually not that popular in max, I think. Is it? I've seen At least it. from my experience. Fair enough. Yeah, usually a brigand. It is going to be so the it angry. Yeah, yeah. He's on the demon wing as well, so might be able to, you know, dance around the green player for a bit. Yeah, this has a chance. This for sure has a chance. Uh, Demon Wrangler going to be very sad into the Stalker. Actually, Stalker is going to give value. Um, but Zorni with I yet another off off the opening. Right. Yeah. As as Sabo, you're not really priced into developing the Wrangler right now. Yeah, oh. you don't have to play it right now. Uh, yeah. And that makes Zorni's opening hand yet another struggle. <laughs> This top deck demon wing is fantastic too. It is, it is. Just now we've got. So let's see what players. else he's running. Um, if he's if he's on a more standard list, which uh, requires you to build a lot of additional lands, that could potentially still be too slow for green. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's just such a nuisance if you're. If you're forced into, you know, making all these additional lands versus being able to draw and then set up your fire bringers with a mobility trick for for the finish, yeah, stuff like that. Um, but if he has something like Celestial Tower, maybe he can like with all the land generation from Zorni, maybe he can Celestial Tower onto a land, build an aggressive mountain. Yeah, yeah, that's usually uh, uh that's usually how I like to play the angry as well. Mm. Um, just sit back on four special lands, draw every turn until you find an opening. Um, this yeah. Death Wish Ghoul looks pretty good with the Demon Wrangler. I think you can even take an aggressive draw here. You're not really priced into making the lands for Thunder Eel now. Yeah, Thunder Eel's not um, going to really impact much in this matchup, I feel. It is when the Stalker comes down, I guess, but... Uh... Uh, and Stalker was on the cover, so Sabo, if he was paying attention, is aware that Stalker exists. Yeah, see, I think this is a mistake, going for going for the uh, mm. ounce this early. And I feel like that's a trap a lot of players fall into, just because they, you know, they want to be able to play all the cards. Right. And, you know, since the deck is going to four special lands, they might as well just start setting it up, getting it out of the way. But mm -hmm. early draws are so important, and you can't really neglect those. Especially when uh, your game plan great becomes... Great way to get ahead. Yeah, especially when your game plan becomes charge three on two lands to build more lands. Yeah, yeah. The tower is available at two deserts, so you really don't need much. Mm -hmm. Unless the because... answer is Horse Master, but uh, yeah, not too far yeah, off Yeah, unless either. that, of course. See, even though Sabo is far ahead on board here, um, what what he's not ahead on is uh, card advantage. Yeah. He did have to invest two creatures into the uh, Death Wish Ghoul Wrangler combo, and is now actually a bit behind because of that. Does get the Thunder Ear, which is a great answer to, to the Deep Wood Stalker. Mm -hmm. um, though we do have to invest our mountain in kind of an awkward we do. position. It's, it's probably left side though. I think yeah. either left side mountain and then fish for draws. Yeah, especially since Zorni has now invested lands for you to step on in the future potentially. Uh, you could maybe get a Firebringer just stepping up. <laughs> uh, yeah. All possible, you require definitely. is a double neutral here. Uh, and with charge three again, like, yeah. So with this left side mountain. 
All you need is that double neutral to bridge the gap. Yeah. And perhaps a bit a bit too optimistic from Zorni here. Going for that line. He's mm -hmm. he's uh he was afraid of mobility, I guess, on the demon wing. But now this leaves him in an awkward spot because he doesn't really want to give the angry player more lands to step on. Yeah. He's hovering the Oak Father. What is this? It's not very big, but it's not. No, I think three, he's three, four. He's looking at taking out the Demon Wing and then probably just playing the Broom, Broom Sprite, right? Yeah, it's really awkward to allow aggressive mountain here. Even though Sabo again has not got very large card advantage here, uh, that aggressive mountain could do some things in the future. Oh yeah, definitely. Because uh, the other option is to potentially explore forest other side, just build up collections, but uh, Demon Wing is causing some problems. It's being very troublesome there. Yeah. And the Oak Father isn't actually that of a threat, even though it does get the scaling from the Blossoming Kodama. Mm -hmm. um, his demon wings are just... You know, they're relentless. Yeah. Putting on so many pre so, so much pressure here. See, that's a f 610 for 7. <laughs> it just gets <laughs> two shot. It gets two shot, exactly. And Sabo needs a draw here. <clears throat> you always start with a draw. Yes. Oh. Draw first, as every good player does 100% of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Not once has it been missed. <laughs> the draw first. But yeah, see, this is where some of the awkwardness starts to come in. You know, having the axe grinder. Ooh. Oof. Oh, no, I don't like that. Making at all. this double neutral here. Ooh. Buying Zorni more time. It's it's not what you want to do here. <clears throat> yeah, we are really going to be started for cards now. Next turn, we're going up to 10 Feria, and we got these such cheap cards in hand. Deathwish Ghoul is essentially one Feria. We got four yeah. Feria of cards to spend here. Big problem. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, having lots of Feria is great, but also being able to spend all your Feria is yep. great. This is the Feria tree issue. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of these angry decks are low on deck weight, but have poor ways of converting that into an actual lead. Mm -hmm. So that's that's also one way you can really um, abuse angry. Or if, if you're playing against an angry deck, try to look for windows where they are low on card si uh, on hand size. Yeah. So that's... that way... Um, you're able to exploit that. And you're also exploiting the fact that they're usually not on a ton of uh, reactive tools, so it's basically just Wind Soldier, maybe some mobility tricks. But you can play around that, and you know, if, if Sabo um, doesn't pay close attention here, uh, Zoni might just be able to sneak a win that way, but he's probably just fine playing a bit for the... Um, for the late game, he doesn't really feel the need to go all in yet with the tree in hand. Yeah. Uh, this like this axe grinder aggressive really isn't going to accomplish much anyways. All Zorni has to do is slap down a Tyrion golem, and the axe grinder is just kind of yeah. sitting there like, oh. <laughs> and notice the uh, desert positioning as well. If that wind yeah. soldier ever wants to do something useful, you have to create yet another special land. Yeah, and unfortunately, and by, that time, at that time you're really you're really struggling against mono green. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it kind of had to happen that way because of the double demon wing start. Uh, it was just too yeah, good not to yeah. go for. But uh, yeah, this late game's gonna hurt a little bit with those wind soldiers for sure. Though there are ways to accommodate for that. You could, for example, only run a one-up wind soldier. Um, in general, run more flying creatures run Smile for additional deck weight as, as some ways to mitigate uh, the weakness of Angry. Mm -hmm. 
Um, but if you're if you're sticking to the mid range pile, you have to be aware that you're not going to put on a lot of pressure in the early game. Uh, yeah. And yeah, especially since you're priced into you know taking the mount for X grinder, yada yada yada. Yeah, this X grinder costed you two power wheel usages. Exactly. <laughs> so even though it's really efficient, it ended up being super costly here for Sabo. And not only and that, even something but like, um, like like the neutral angry creatures are are mm. better in that spot. Uh, the, the Imperial Trooper comes to mind, for example. That would have been great, just yeah. being able to stack that on the neutral. Oh, that's a beautiful Bloom Sprite pull. Yeah. Shamanic Dance. Mm. Dance allows your Golem here to stall the right side. Um, does Sony go for the collection here? I think he is, Oops. actually. Yeah, he's... Yeah. He's just looking to take some trades, clean bit up. And yeah, that's that. Alright, Mr. X Grinder, was that worth the investment? <laughs> <laughs> well, you had another one, so that's yeah, something. Oh, well, there's also Deckweight in Ariana. Yeah. But again, desert placement leaves much to be desired. It does. I think Ariana is going to help quite a bit, but unfortunately, Zorny's actually going to be on tree very soon, and that's going to be yeah. uh, outscaling Ariana just a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it will. So, Sabo's probably looking at denying the golem the collection here, but the rest of his board is just so weak, he... He can play his whole hand, but it doesn't really accomplish a ton. Yeah, I think you just invest everything into right side here. Uh, I guess Ariana goes left, but like, Ariana's just so out of position. I don't know. It is, it is. I guess you put it but on left side. At the same time, you can't really afford to make yet another desert. Yeah, you really can't. It doesn't really work. Um, bit awkward for Zorni here does have to make another land, but I think he's fine doing that. Mm -hmm. So he can just um, step center with a golem because he knows Sabo is not going to make another special land. He really wants his draw. Yeah, that's a good and point. Zorni can exploit that. And yeah, yeah. that's a mm -hmm. solid turn. Yeah, and that Kodama moving away from the Ariana, now the Ariana is just really out of position, not able to trade into very much here. And yeah, Sabo's got to go for that draw. Time of Legends for Ariana? Apparently. Oh my god. <laughs> we found a cipher. <laughs> That's actually not awful. It's also not great. It is... If you're planning on playing Cypher, you'd have to take a pre-hit on the Therian Golem. Um, because otherwise, yeah. the Golem hits the Cypher and then Zorni just gets to clean up with the Bullpine. So, if you're, if you're planning on playing Cypher, it does have to come down in that particular sequence. Do you have to pre-hit, though? Because... You do. do. Do you care, though, if this dies? I mean, I guess why not pre-hit? Uh, you're not really losing much if you're pre-hitting. So I, enough, I think I you guess. just want to enable Cypher here more mm. than... Well, actually, now it trades into Grinder. Uh, so that's also, right, also bad. Yeah, it just trades in the Grinder. Yeah, I think yeah. you don't have to pre-hit there, right? You force Sorny to build the land for you, right? And then... Uh, he's got to invest a lot into this 5 Faria investment you made. It's difficult, it's difficult. Of course it's sure. weak to Guidance, but... I don't know. Well, I, I guess there really was only Wood Elemental top deck that would have allowed for the Cypher clear that turn then. Oh. Yeah, I mean, with yeah these three cards in hand, Zorni would have to have Wood Ellie plus Guidance to clean it up. 
Which, uh, to be fair, he did get, but... Yeah. Um, now it's just tree, and tree's uncontested. Uh, the yeah. Vulpine can take out the 3 1, and you get a collection as well. Uh, at that point, Ariana trading into the Vulpine will not, uh, not be enough. Mm -hmm. tree. And yeah, tree. <laughs> tree, tree, tree! Oof. Happy little trees! <laughs> Quite the sizable one, actually. Uh, playing out of uh, charge range as well. Yeah, yeah, very good point. Feeling very confident about all of this investment on left side. He can defend this tree quite well. Uh, and Sabo again. That awkward face. <laughs> <laughs> what if we put Ariana aggressive? I think... What you want to consider here may be a full clear on left side just to starve right. your opponent. But it's it's also really expensive and then mm -hmm. if your opponent has a cheap creature in hand, he doesn't even have to have a cheap creature in hand. He can just wait an additional turn and then play the big creature. Yeah. It's it's really tricky here. It is. I almost like saving my resources. Just oh, a singular taunt kind of shuts these down later. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, this was very, uh, very well defended by Zorni, I think, overall. Mm -hmm. um, he really showed that he can make use of uh, the angry, angry's inability to, you know, close out games and set up efficient lines. Yeah, uh, Thunder Eel in the back here doesn't really cut it. And again, it looks good in at first glance, but it really doesn't set you up for any clear on the tree or whatsoever. Yeah, oh, Zorni got the uh, buff he wanted. Yeah. Um, he could he could consider making a land, or he could just play it in double collection, which isn't awful either. The wood alley. Um, yeah, yeah. Because I don't think you're really concerned with face damage, right? You're more uh, concerned with uh, getting for, your collections. You're right. healing for seven every turn. Yeah, you're healing for seven, fair enough. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, really... Looks like we agree. Yeah. Your, your <laughs> new life total is now the tree. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna protect the tree. Now, where do we place this land? Because I don't think you want to build land up up uh, there. Maybe aggressively? Oh, really? Uh, I think you don't really care. Maybe you do. It, it gives him a good step, right? So he can step now, play an aggressive grinder. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what you're worried about. And then the tree dies actually to just the grinder and the wind soldier. Mm -hmm. You could also... Mm drop a desert because we want Ariana, but you also want Firebringers, but I think Firebringers is more important. Yeah, you probably dropped them out yeah. in aggressive. Oh no, that's oh. a defensive arc. Yeah, I don't know if de defense is going to be the answer here. <laughs> I doubt it. The tree is going to scale oh. super hard. We do have uh... Is that an answer? I don't think that's an answer. No, I don't think that's going to cut it. Horse Master allows Ariana to hit the tree, but... Alright, so we'd have to build a desert in Wind Soldier, but I don't think we have enough area. Yeah, there's also 12-17. <laughs> I think Tree has maybe done its job. Maybe. He probably wants a little bit more out of it, though, to f fight Firebringers, but uh, it's, I don't know. I don't think it's going to matter too much. 17 life. Oh boy. There's not even. Sadly, there's not even a line here that lets you clear the tree. Or one short. Well. Uh, would that work? I don't think. Actually, let me think for a minute. Deserts. Uh, right? This. No. The lands are just 
<laughs> oh no, just the, a tiny oh, bit yeah, too awkward. A, yeah, the taunt is in the way. I was thinking the uh, D two spot for the desert, but it's the taunt in the yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yikes! <laughs> That's rough. So just the potential line was: uh, we can step cipher, build a desert, produce the wind soldier, collect with wind soldier, but uh, don't quite oh, actually know that the horse master. Yeah, 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 yeah. That doesn't work. Uh, God we, damn it! Uh... Wait, six. Wait, we have enough. No, actually, it works. It works. Yeah, we do. It, it does work. Never because mind. the wind soldier collects from the top well, right? Yeah, this costs five. So side the steps center, make a desert. Wind soldier collects um, B five, and oh, then Ariana with a horse master clears. You have to have though. You have to do it in this order. Yeah, you have to go wind soldier first to get the collection. Oh, he didn't see it. Yeah. That's too bad. You saw that though. Yep. <laughs> Missed the X grinder. Ah, uh, that really sucks. Another Honestly, tree. Honestly, was there a chance if he cleared the tree that turn with Firebringer in the future? Maybe. Ah, uh, I doubt it. it he is it's... out collecting, but. I think the stats are just too much for him to handle. Sorny has really established some great stats here with the tree. Yeah. Each of those green creatures are a firebringer of their own, respectively. So. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, these Oakfathers are going to get the uh, 11 life stat on top of that. Big. Large. <laughs> <laughs> very, very That's chunky. the first Firebringer, though. I don't think it's big enough. <laughs> it's, not. it's not. It is sadly not. Though you can get it out of the Guidance range if you if you want to contest the Therian Golem. Yeah, it just really sucks that we couldn't clear that tree, because uh, now we've really got no answers. Oh. Oh, just gonna play it in, not respecting the guidance at all, and playing the yes. Ariana anyway. Bit of a, bit of a mismanagement there, I think. Sabo might be feeling the pressure. He's feeling a little uh, lost in this game. No, I, I think it was just uh, correct to play the Ariana the first, no matter what. So you get yeah, one buff on the fire. Yeah, right now. I mean, he's maybe. Uh, what I mean is maybe his uh, mentality is. Uh, feeling down in the matchup, <laughs> so not thinking uh, as well. Perhaps, yeah. Um, now he missed two buffs, <laughs> which I won't, I won't <laughs> hold against him. But just as a note for aspiring Ferrier players, these mm. small mistakes matter, and if they accumulate over time, it's really, uh, really tough to crack, crack back into a game. Yeah. Especially if you've got uh, uh, almost an evenly paired matchup here, even skills of players. If that's a thing, then your uh, the small decisions do make a big impact. Another wood elemental here. Yeah, I think that's just gonna be it. I don't... Yeah, it does. <laughs> He does respect him of the Firebringer here by doing this uh, defensive land placement. Mm. He's yes. also, again, locking out the Wind Soldier. Yeah, with that 9-1 still. Which is super funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at least to me, probably not to Sabo. <laughs> yeah. There's also a 13-20 at uh, Sabo's face, so there's definitely something to be said about that. Yeah, that just kind of casually walked up there, didn't it? <laughs> it did, it did. Just casually scooting through a bunch of forests. Casually scooting. Through the hoops and tribulations. <laughs> Is this a very efficient 9 damage from Sabo, but uh, it's equally a very efficient wood elemental. <laughs> yeah. First time in history. Wood Elemental actually isn't awful. <laughs> well, I mean, if we're talking history here... 
Yeah, there was a time where Wood Elemental had an additional attack point. I don't know yeah. if you guys uh, are ready for such a nostalgic <laughs> raving, but it used to be great. It used to be good. Yeah, 3 4 Wood Elemental. Very, very strong. Yeah. That was even during the Frog Tosser era, I think. Yeah, yeah. But since then, it just has fallen prey to so many flyers. Mm. Yeah, two four style. It, it, it really is. Yeah, it really is uh, fa fascinating how one attack point can matter so much in this game. Yeah, we've seen and that. And usually, that's the one between two and three. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. We've seen that uh, a few times over Faria's history, with the underground boss also getting it an attack stat change and just completely changing the viability of the card. I think it was just a... Uh, oh, sorry, the, it was the uh, life HP. stat. Yeah, not the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the life stat. Hey, look, we have an oh answer my to gosh. the tree. Oh, wait. Oh my god, he's one off? What happened here? Was wait, there... why? <laughs> what? I didn't pay attention to these last two. Uh... I didn't, I think, didn't he have three Feria open still? He could have wins. He could have had a lethal there, no? Or there was a uh, wins. Uh, there was a taunt near near the uh, orb as well. So there was really only one avenue of play. No, no, no. Wait, did he play the firebringer that turn, or was it last turn? I, 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 can't I didn't remember. pay attention. Yeah, uh, maybe it was inactive. Back. If it was active, he could have just played the wind soldier there, stepped it out of range, uh, then played. Oh, sorry. No, that. Oh, right. For... I'm dumb. Wood Elemental. <laughs> Why am I thinking we that? Was, uh, yeah. yeah. Anyhow, that is uh, one series showcasing uh, strengths and weaknesses of Red Yellow. More so weaknesses, but... <laughs> yeah, that was a good match to display like where the card drawing becomes very important with the Red Yellow Angry there. Yeah. And just imagine, you know, uh, Sabo having this Firebringer just a few turns earlier. Oh, yeah. Just a few, a few, few turns inches earlier, closer. A few stats larger. Uh, if you get that to 20 yeah. attack, it poses a real big threat with that Aura Dream Fanatic. Uh, so, this looks like maybe the Soul... Uh, soul Eel variant. We got Airbot, Mistral Guide, well, Spirit Theft. It's It's... It's certainly something. I'm not sure what it is yet, but there's a mystery guide in here. I like to see mystery guide. Yeah, we saw a copter. I love the copter mystery guide interaction. Yeah. It's... So it does get quite awkward with your land placement. It does, um, but it's... if you're if you're going multicolor mystery guide, it's it's always such a hassle. It's such a fun combo, though. Yeah, the funness right. makes up for it in my mind. <laughs> 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 all right Zorni with a fantastic start making up for all these games where he drew very poorly in the opening yeah and still this might actually be the match where it does matter yeah um you know I being agree. able to contest an airbot early on super good love me some deep wood stalker mm. <laughs> stalker be stuck in airbots and also, um, you have to note, with a lot of these lists, um, going second is incredibly awkward. You're playing multicolor already, and then having to invest that additional extra land, or that extra turn rather, um, is just something you want to avoid at all cost. Just, uh, it slows down your land placement so much. Yeah, even though <sighs> it, it seems like it's one turn slow down, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's big. Yeah. Uh, imagine setting up to triple collect on turn three with a mystery plus manta rider. Mm -hmm. it's, it's so much better than than this setup here. And uh, also, he effectively didn't deny the collection because a uh, vulpine does some uh, teleportations. Yeah. And Zorni is already on turn on on four forests, right? And if you're looking at Sabo's hand, he still he still has to invest yet another land just to be able to play all his cards. Yeah, and, this, and he's and, nowhere near contesting. 
Yeah, and in this particular list, it's almost more important to build your maximum land count early on in the game because we've got so many cards like the Sandstone Explorer, the Eel, um, we've got Wind Soldier and Flame Burst both as removal tools. So unlike the Angry list where you can afford to take early draws, this list almost can't afford that. Well, it's more so that you can't really... Well, yeah. <laughs> what, what you said, basically. <laughs> I just uh, was looking for a more convoluted way of saying what you exactly said. Then I, Fair enough. <laughs> then I realized it was not necessary because you conveyed already everything that was there. Um, yeah, maybe a small add-on. Uh, mm. It's just miserable playing the Explore with the Mystery Guide setup. Mm. You really can't make any good use of the uh, neutral tile that you're getting. Um, since you want all your lands already, you know, stuck next to each other in order to get the optimal dash set up for the mystery guide. And yeah, explore just becomes uh, a net to farrier, but it doesn't always help you. Not always the greatest. Yeah. Uh, mystery guide stepping out of teleport, potential teleport range with uh, land ramp. Plus a Guidance. It's a lot that he needs, but I guess might as well play around it. Yeah, but Zorni has been so efficient with his collections. He can even afford to trade uh, his Vulpines here and then just uh, redevelop the Kodama plus Golem. Yeah, that's nuts. We got Kodama plus Golem plus a feed if we want it, but I don't think the feed's necessary. Yeah, Zorni is just very happy. Yeah. I would imagine. Doesn't go for the clear, actually. I guess it's... Tries to save and plays a blossoming there to contest as well. It's not Just bad. Just there. Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. Uh, we did see a spirit theft earlier in Sabo's hand. Though I don't know if Sabo wants this Kodama. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, I don't really like the feed. Yeah, I don't think feed I is guess... very necessary here. I, I don't think it is. Because yeah. you're winning anyhow with a golem. Mm. It's just a great way of you know putting stats on the board. So using the feed isn't really needed in my opinion. Yeah, no, I agree. I think you can hold on to that for now. There are definitely matchups where you're priced into feeding for you know additional value, where you're feeding for tempo, or you're feeding because you don't want to play into blue, for example. Yeah, give them more frogify targets. But this isn't one of those games, I think. See, Zorni is on five here. I guess he's looking for his Oak Fathers, but... Oh, uh, if, yeah. If you're really planning on playing Oak Father, then Oak Father feat is just a better play in terms of, Ooh. you know, raw value that you're getting. Mm. Right, I was thinking of going for Copter, but I guess Copter is pretty awful. <laughs> yeah, it's just... Oh, this is... This would have been perfect, actually. <laughs> Not quite there yet, but um, the Vulpine could have value traded the Mystery Guide if uh, the Wood Elemental had come down here as well. But didn't really line up. So Zorni is probably just stepping back and, you know, waiting, playing it patiently. Yeah, we can play Green's game of just waiting it out. With the Wood Alley in hand, that's pretty sneaky in the future if we want to clear this Mistral Guide. Although he probably steps backwards once again, since he did that last turn. Yeah, yeah. Definitely wants to play around the... Um, the teleport here. Notice also how, um, by playing the Golem on the far right, Sabo is denied the X Grinder spot. So now, yeah, for those who don't know, the X Grinder can be triggered by Mistral Guide, and uh, if you dash this, uh, X Grinder's gift trigger actually happens after the dash, so it will calculate whether it's on a well after it's been dashed, so he could actually dash onto that forest and get the buffs. But so this is really... No. Yeah, this is, I think, where the, the game just faults and there's not much Sabo can do mm -hmm. uh, it's just a case of you know having rats removal 
and it traditionally being very weak. This is what green has to offer, namely big stats here. Yeah. And Could actually get the double dash here on the X grinder if he wanted. <laughs> Even get a very nice copter. Goes for the explorer here and takes the collection, that's fair. Copter would have uh, been kind of cool. Yeah. Uh. Two, two. I don't think Zoni is concerned here at all. Hmm. So he's probably taking a draw. Um, I know there's a line where he could... Uh, he could also value trade the mystery guide. It might have not been too awful either. So um, you would have had to... Right, so you go left side. Yeah. But also, if you're doing that, you're playing Wood Elemental and you'd rather play a creature that benefits from all the forests you've accumulated rather than, you know, spending an additional four on taking a value trade. So, yeah. while it might look good at first glance, it doesn't really actually help you propel your other game plan, right? And that is just playing big static units. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, Sabo's already got two Mistral Guides on board anyways. If you clear one, uh, he's already got the other one. Yeah, I, I don't think you clear it for the effect. I think it's more the value trade that you're trying to take. Fair that enough, the... yeah. And yeah, this is just a uh, very... Sticky. Too many stats. Too many stats. Oh, doesn't get the trade. Oh, he roped. Lost connection. Yeah, that happens if you click a button on the very last, uh, like, millisecond of your turn before the turn timer runs out, you will 100% of the time crash. <laughs> yeah, Feria is really relentless in punishing the indecisive. <laughs> It's a feature. It's, it's a feature. Not a bug. Can't handle the competitive nature of it? <laughs> Get lost. <laughs> Get lost, indeed. <laughs> uh, well, even even being disconnected here, I think Zoni is in a fantastic spot. Um, yeah. And Sabo, being a good guy, takes his turn uh, to the very last second. Very sportsman-like. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I wonder if he trades the Vulpine. That would be... Actually, gonna go face. Uh, sh I guess. Makes sense. I mean, you don't really have any good value trades here. Uh, if we go for face lens instead... Yeah, you, you somehow have to salvage a win. Yeah, we don't have Firebringers uh, late game in this list. You do not. I, I would imagine you don't run those. Yeah. The, the keyword is salvage, by the way. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's still a very tricky situation here. Um, you, you really wanted those uh, explorers to come down earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, but we ended up with this uh, sort of uh, awkward hand here where, where we were not able to put on any pressure or contest instead of instead of it we were just uh, waiting back and you know having all these removals piled up yeah the copter the flamers the wind soldier all of this just clunking up hand because there's not really great opportunities to use these against green yeah, goes for a wood elemental here. It's, I'm not sure if I like that. Uh, so he's he's probably uh, preserving the guidance then. Uh, that's that's why he's taking that line. Uh, you can still plus one and play guidance, right? I th but I don't think there's a need if this is the line. Yeah, I'm just not sure if I would have taken the wood element wood elemental necessarily. Um, Pushes up, which Time is fair. Controls. 
Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, I could have held on to the wood ellie there, just going for double neutral. If you were neutraling anyways, you can hold the wood ellie to produce that aggressively. Uh, this, you also build yeah. land for your opponent's wind soldier. Uh, not that it really matters, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, option you provide your opponent. Yeah, not, not necessarily though the greatest of options. Yeah. Uh this play here isn't quite enough it's it's definitely one of the better copters you can get in this game but um you take out the even when, yeah well i'm i'm happy i had my prediction right so this was a three hour after all yeah <laughs> Um, really tough to leave open the mono green when you've got three redless. Yeah, as was mentioned. Uh, Though on that note, just imagine how different of a series this would have been if uh, Sabo went for the rush game plan in game one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if he had won that match, that would have been pretty huge. And he was actually in a in a decent spot for winning that, given how bad Zorni's early hand was. Yeah, you just that slow play allowed Zorni to build up to that Dwardia in that first game, uh, and actually establish a desperate uh, defense. Yeah, if it if you, if it weren't for the double flame burst on the Dwardia, even at that spot, I think uh, Sabo was not looking too bad to take it take it home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, we just go all in face here, right? <laughs> I say all in with a limited <laughs> Feria pool, but... Well, something has to happen. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure what what is going to happen, but... That is I think Sambo knows <laughs> it, and there's a well played, so... That's a fair Rio, play. Sony? 3 to Zorni. Uh, Zorni's very flexible lineup showing how good flexibility is in tournament settings. Um, well, and yeah. Also so. showcasing the power of monogreen versus a quadruple red lineup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not to take any credit away from his playing, but. Yeah, I think uh, Sabo worked with uh, what he had. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So we'll take a quick look at the brackets here again. So Zorni is going to move on to the semi-finals against Ghost. I don't know. Uh, right, Ghost has been in the Discord a little bit, uh, beating out Arrow. Right. I think Ghost is a newer player, right? Haven't seen him I around. I think so, yeah. He's, he's probably uh, one of the newer faces around here. Yeah, so congrats uh, to Ghost for making it to the semi-finals. Quite the accomplishment. He's, he's been eager to, uh, to get into the tournament scene, from what I've heard. Awesome. Maybe I'm. Um, yeah. So nice to see him, uh, you know, make it to the semifinals. Yeah. And then top side, we have Zarak versus Fickle. A Fickle advancing as well, which might just mean he, he didn't choose to bring a full Yak lineup. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, Fickle. We'll have to see if he stuck to his roots or if he actually uh, migrated yeah. to a different lineup. Yeah, just like Sesh bringing mono blue all the time, Fickle is a uh, resident Yak player, I think. Uh, Phantom, also a newer player, but I think he, he's been doing quite well in the uh, recent tournaments as well. Um, so we might as well follow Zorni again, because I think Fickle, like I said, is streaming... Yeah, this is an exclusive yeah. Zorni broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> Exclusive Zorni footage. You can only find it here on the Moonfasa channel. Only here. Yeah. <laughs> only the freshest of Zornis. Yes. So uh, we'll probably, I guess we'll give the players a couple minutes break and I'll set up the lobby in the meantime, but uh, don't go good. too far, chat. We'll be back with the semi-finals, continuing on with the Zorni Rampage. All 
Alright, we're back with the semi-finals. We're gonna go with Zorni versus Ghost. Ghost, a newer player, um, but he's kind of been crushing through this bracket here. Zorni is going to be quite the difficult opponent. Very seasoned veteran of the game, but uh, uh, let's see what Ghost has to offer him. Looks like Ghost actually with a... Uh, I see some standard deck list here, potentially. We got a flyers list, maybe. Or monstrosity, I don't know. Yeah, probably monstrosity. Mm -hmm. uh, could also be flyers, of course, yeah. With disciple? A... Uh... That's pretty evident, yeah, that, that is a disciple list. Um, Beasts... Looks like blue green beast, maybe, as well. And then uh, probably octopus. max could be... Yeah, max would make sense because of the three deserts. Yeah. Uh, three is pretty shallow for most other archetypes. So just the Abbot, uh, most likely. Mm -hmm. Let's see if... I don't know if uh, Zorni really wanted to bend the yellow here. I guess he's confident in beating Disciple. Um, Ghost banning the green, which... Well... I'm not sure if that's the right ban here. Well, if if the red was... Oh, sorry, Zorni is banning the yellow. Yeah, if Zorni's red gets banned, the Flyers is pretty good against Zorni's lineup, right? Uh, I, I feel like blue-green has a fairly decent chance. Uh, against Flyers? Yeah, yeah. It, well, it depends how you build it, right? Uh, in general, it will be a bad matchup if you're, um, if you're going all-in on one creature, like um, a Triton Warrior is awful in general. If you're spreading out your buffs a bit more with, uh, say, Triton Drainers, uh, Battletoads, it's a lot more manageable. Oh, I think this is the Beasts, right? I think Zorni's list is um, the Beasts, which has, like, kind of inefficient stats trading into Flyers, right? Well, I, I think it's blue-green. We, we've been playing a lot of blue-green lately, so... Oh, right, okay. Could just be that. I just assumed it was Beasts, because um, Zorni's been bringing that a lot. But, yeah, it could be something else. It could also be Beasts, yeah. Um, Go starting actually, with now that I think about it, green heavier list, that's probably Beasts. Mm -hmm. Like, I think Sony's list kind of struggles to Flyers if, if his red gets banned. Yeah, yeah. Which it didn't, but... That's fair, uh, then. Yeah. Uh, starting with Disciple on Ghost's side. So, this could go anyway. <laughs> Well, it's it's probably going in Zorni's favor there. Yeah, I, we got t Tempo Beasts is going to have uh, uh, quite the advantage. I think unless Ghost has exactly Barter Disciple out on turn four, it yeah. will be in Zorni's favor. Uh, it doesn't quite find the dis uh, Disciple in the opening hand. Double fails instead, but ooh, start oh. center. I don't yeah, like that. center start is interesting. Uh, typically, with this and list, you want to go science. Yeah, the explore vulpine here is really good. Uh, I don't think you start forest. Yeah, yeah, explore vulpine. Then you can step back and teleport. Yeah, I, um, I think I would have preferred starting explore center. And then taking the forest uh, over over doing it like this, uh, just because it gives you a bit more reach later on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. We found the disciple. It allows for for an easier switch as well with the jumpers. Mm. Um, uh, so this is going to be really interesting with the disciple start and hunt down in Zorni's hand. Uh, yeah. So if, Ghost can't play the Disciple too early. And if Zorni um, is so inclined, we have uh, 9 damage between the Octopus and the Hunt Down. <clears throat> yeah, he's he's debating here whether he wants the double land up or whether he wants to go slower. Um, I think building the Hunt Down is okay because of that Disciple coming down. Uh, you want to be able to answer that early. Yeah. And we got another Hunt Down. Because the only way Zorni loses this... He is playing quite slow, if... yeah. He's playing quite slow. 
Because yeah. you're going to Mystic Beast and then you have yeah, you're also priced into playing the second forest as well. Yeah, you kinda have to go forest here and then lake and then you only you don't even have a really aggressive land, it's just a Mystic Beast spot, so I'm actually gonna go for the double neutrals now. Yeah. Ghost not finding any target for the effect experiment here. That's a yikes. Isn't, isn't ideal. Grizzly. But doing the right play of holding the, the disciple, I, I guess you don't really want to play it anyways. You don't have anything to synergize. <laughs> So that's a mystic beast coming down. I wonder if we see this uh, this uh, shifting octopus come down as well. Wow. Uh, Terrible hand for ghost. Ouch. Can happen with a uh, heavy combo oriented list like this. <laughs> and but... a map dealer, not what you're looking for. So yeah. I don't think you play anything else. Yeah, you can't yeah, really. Just gotta wait. Now, what's really good for Zorni here is he gets to step on the lake and <coughs> effectively denies yet another draw. Because if you're finding uh, something like a Stargazer, you're really priced into, um, you know, right. having two lakes open, one for the Disciple, one for the failed Stargazer, to really accumulate some buffs. Yeah. Um, that's not enough. Yeah, that is not enough. Soul Drain. Just <laughs> gonna drop the fields. Uh... No, that can't be right. That cannot be right. Yeah. And this is just gonna get. That's a sh amazing trade with just hunt down. Like all, all you need is one hunt down there. Even, even without the hunt down. Yeah, it's still pretty bad. You've yeah. used all of your fairy uh, generation. Hits face here as well with the bullpine. Oh, actually hits for five and then can set up another octopus in the back. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, probably just a 7-3. You're not really worried about any threats from yeah, the disciple yeah. player. You've already seen a soul drain. I wouldn't be too worried about that. Um... I was for the Deepwood Grizzly instead, which is, which is all right. Well, I think you just go. For I could it even anyways, take right? a value trade here by playing the guidance. Yeah. Sure. He's pretty confident in this value trade. Yeah. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Yeah. Why not? Again, you're <laughs> not worried about three damage sources, really. Yeah. More area generation. Oh no. Disastrous starts. There's something oddly satisfying about Disciple uh, drawing that though. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. I not to play favorites, but uh, Disciple it's, it's is not also my not favorite the greatest list. in terms of consistency. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, th I think you had to hold on just one more turn as Ghost here mm -hmm. and really try to opt for. Yeah, yeah, you weren't, the stick. you weren't under. It uh, probably wouldn't have stopped that anyhow. It probably wouldn't have. I mean, you still got that nine damage hunt down potential. Yeah. Uh, plus, the Mystic Beast would still be alive. Actually, isn't that lethal? Uh, right, so we had the Vulcan. No, no, you're, you're off. Yeah, you're one off. So you're one off. Can we find the third Soul Pact? Soul Pact lethal? <laughs> He's fishing for it. Oh, no, couldn't find it. Oh, he's gonna keep fishing. <laughs> <laughs> We've already seen all the fails being used, so... These uh, raw thieves aren't really that efficient. Yeah. No, nope, it's just gonna be a surrender. All right, so yeah. game one going to Zorni. Disciple list down.
So it might actually be quite a struggle for Ghost here with the rest of the lineup. Um, I mean, the green-blue is a potential. We got a mirror. That's what he's going for. Uh, if this is mechs, I think uh, beasts can do all right against mechs. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Even just the uh, deep red grizzly alone and the uh, shifting octopus prove uh, always such a hassle to deal with for yes. the uh, max player just because the life stat is so awkward. Mm. So this makes sense for the counter pick. Uh, just go for the mirror, hope that you can uh, beat out the space list with your own. Assuming this is a mirror, at least. Yeah, yeah. Looks like it is. Interesting, though. I wouldn't have expected beasts uh, to show up in this tournament. I think Zorni has been playing it. Well, he played it in the past tournament. Um, maybe he inspired some of that. But yeah, I I tried out Beasts once the uh, Frog Tosser was nerfed. I tried it out in a few tournaments, and then I found it was uh, it's okay. It's it's a it's a solid list, but uh, it struggles to this Flyers meta we're in. I feel <laughs> it it doesn't really solve a ton of uh, problems. And I it, think uh, you, yeah. you you encounter in deck building, right? Yeah, it also um, doesn't uh, solve much. Also true. If you're if you're worried about flyers, there's also red green, which is better usually. Mm. The crack thorns and AoE. Um, so that fits much better into a lineup. Um, whereas the blue doesn't really add a ton, I feel like. It's more just for tempo. Uh, like against the yellow matchup, yeah, it doesn't really add much. But uh, it's a tempo list. Blue is just adding that tempo. It's replaced the. Uh, Blue yellow tempo, I guess, for now. <laughs> well, then you're free to play blue as well, though. You don't have to go the extra mile to play green. Also, true. I guess it can work if you're really anticipating a lot of red mm -hmm. um, being brought up as counters to, uh, you know, all the yellow stuff, but. Which is fair. I think also this does uh, better against yellow than the blue-yellow tempo does against yellow. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Um, tower helps, Vulpine helps, not being forced to play a uh, 5 cost 5, 5 helps. <laughs> All <Yeah>. these things help. <laughs> uh, we're using the Sunken oh. Tower here to get that Mystic Beast spot. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Though arguably, um, what's worse about the green, uh, the blue-green lists is that Barter becomes a very, uh, very relevant threat, mm. right? Because one one value trade on a flyer often shuts down your entire board. That's true. <laughs> blue-green is missing those uh, damage ping removals. So, Zorni actually can get up to the 8 tech damage here, which is fantastic, uh, with yeah. the Guidance top deck. So taking uh, out the Grizzly I... in one hit, really, really important here. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, thinking about building a forest, don't you want this as a lake? Well, I, I don't think he, he cares too much right now, because he... Guess we can still has the power to work with. Mm. Um, it's it's gonna get occupied anyhow. This second leg. Now, um, but yeah, just having the initiative here, super good for Sony. But like, we could have saved one tower charge simply by moving the tower up, right? Maybe he wants to keep the tower out of range of stuff. Uh, hmm. I mean, he was pr he was priced into playing the sunken, right? Because he wanted the trade. 
I mean, you could have sunk and towered the lake up and then built the forest. Oh, oh yeah. I see. Yeah. But gonna do it this way. Eat oh, this way, um, you kind of enable the vulpine, right? If you're, if you're concerned with that. Uh, but it was still enabled anyways, right? Like, you would have had the exact same setup, but with the lake one up. Oh yeah, fair, yeah. I guess. Uh, oh, like there's a very cheeky line here. Um, I think I would like to hunt down the Mystic Beast and then push the uh, Herod out of trade range. And that Ooh. way you're setting up a two-turn clock. Yeah, I like that. Because uh, Ghost, as the Beast List, isn't going to have many uh, removal options if his stock yeah. is out of range. Maybe uh, land tricks, but yeah. It would have to be a hunt down of his own, basically. Um, still goes for the hunt down line, which I think is a bit weaker here. Mm. <laughs> and now <laughs> and we're goes for the... <laughs> Okay, okay. And we're not using the tower to move the lake now. Uh, I'm sad about the lake, but... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, well. it's, it's gonna be stuck there for a while. Um, yeah, awkwardness. Blue green awkwardness. Yep. Donnie being able to dance around uh, ghost creatures quite well. Always one step ahead, taking initiative. Overground tower is such a nice card in this list, I feel. Yeah. In Just... general, in green, uh, it pays off so well. So what it does is it, it essentially says, you can't come into my trade range unless you bring some form of pre-buff or commitment here. Mm -hmm. Like, look at this. This yeah. has happened twice now where, I mean, the tower was on board there, but uh, uh, twice now, Zorni's just been able to bump up one tiny little stat to take the value trade. Yeah, it's so, so potent for screen. And yeah, there goes it. Yeah, Game mirror one. match down. Uh, we're gonna have to struggle with the max list now. It's gonna be a lot more difficult. Uh, depending on the list, I wouldn't be too. Uh... It could not be max. Yeah. No. Also, I, I was going to say uh, it could not be that bad of a matchup. Mm. Especially if your opponent is leaning more into the blue side of things. And then you can still get good good uh, turns where you just, um, you know, drop your entire hand, clear the board, and develop like two or three aggressive units. It's possible. And you can win from those windows, but they are extremely rare and mm. hard to set up. And I don't think Bombslinger is the way you're gonna get there. No, don't think you really need a Ken Carrier. Uh, well, in the opening hand, sure, yeah. Double air bonds. And let's see. Yeah, I was gonna say <sighs> Airbot Stalker, but Stalker. These stalkers from Zorni have gobbled up so many airbots. I mean, I think we've only seen one, but that's so many. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. One is a large the same number. side. That has to be a mistake. Mm. You can't go same side versus beasts. Especially with Airbot in hand. I don't know what's meant to contest. Maybe he's trying to set up bomb slinger lands, but you're just kind of giving your uh, opponent free lands to step on here. Yeah. So I, I think you always want to choose sides here if you're playing second. It just gives you mm -hmm. more options. That Airbot could have been potentially in double collection. Um, yeah, which it's it's not going to get there, unfortunately. And also, one thing I've found is uh, people tend to play the airbots too early. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with and you can afford to play a lot slower with Max. Max I think is, some people Max is a very tricky list to pilot because it's uh, it plays kind of unconventionally to other lists. You don't have to auto. You probably don't want to auto play the airbots. Uh, the turn one airbot, yeah. I don't mind so much, but uh, these are great to use with detonates later on. Uh, also, this left side airbot is in a really tricky situation now. 
where he's gonna he, yeah. he's not gonna be able to run away uh i would guess not gonna be able to run away yeah yeah you really need the detonate early on um to go with the airbot oh uh, yeah this is why i prefer uh uh the other movement cards uh shifting tide over sunken tower and the beasts because you just it's a bit faster yeah yeah if you're going to two legs anyhow for the mystic beast that's fine um, but yeah, Ghost is not going to win this game just by, um, you know, sinking all his uh, creatures into one Grizzly. You really have to set up a big AOE clear, otherwise you're not you're not going anywhere. Yeah. Or again, you know, just getting the Ken Carrier and then um, getting a few aggressive hits because out racing is very much a threat. Definitely, yeah. Cannon, can ca Cannon Carrier can very much accomplish that. Uh, Bomba Slinger, normally kind of a nice answer against the Grizzly, but uh, kind of awkward into the Orphan Fugu there. I mean, again, I don't think you win by playing for board. At least not if you're going one mm. for one or even have to sink in multiple uh, Agree, removal yeah. pieces into a singular bomb, uh, into a singular Grizzly. That doesn't work usually. And Ghost is already tapped out of Faria, so yeah, Zoni doesn't have to worry about Bomb Slinger, uh, oh, oh sorry, Ken Carrier, Detonate, uh, Shaker is also out of the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, It's really important you, you keep up a lot of Faria, I think as well, so um, that's another mistake a lot of players make, I think, is just um, playing out your hand and curving out when you really don't want to do that. Yeah, it's very much a control list. You gotta, well, it's like a combo control. Kind of have to uh, uh, make sure you're holding Faria open sometimes for relevant trades, or relevant takes. It's, it's definitely correct to play control in some instances as the uh, red mech player, but in other instances you just have to Go ahead and try to set up a, um, a combo kill. Right? Yeah, so that's yeah. I think that that's the idea I'm trying to get at. But you're right that uh, yeah. it's not yeah. kind of combo uh, controls usual game plan. Yeah. Yikes! With no feria. Yeah, not great. Boss looking tough. Uh, gonna have to invest lands. We don't want to invest here too. See if we had had gone to the opposite side uh, We wouldn't have as many issues You also make Zorni struggle a little bit getting to your face because he has to build lands He doesn't want to build uh, in this instance Zorni didn't have to build. Oh, we had a double neutral here uh, I don't remember why we double neutraled, but Zorni here pretty much has built his four special ends and hasn't needed to build any others. Yeah. Interesting that he would uh, take this line of play. He gets. Does he go for the double buff? I wonder. It looks like that's what he's setting up. Maybe he's just playing out of Cypher's Wrath. He could be playing around another bomb slinger here. Um, could, that could be a thing. But I think in this it's... case, I think I would have preferred, I would have preferred uh, shifting the uh, three eight out of collection. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Oh, he's going for it anyways. Uh, why not the other tower though? Oh, uh, play around bomb slinger. I don't know. But I have I no mean... idea. <laughs> Ghost is on very limited hand size here. We've seen one bomb slinger. I think it's worth it just to invest the buff. This is your only creature. You kind of want it to stick. Yeah, you have to. You have to get it to stick. Uh, second flame. This would have been a blur out. Um, yeah, if Ghost had the answer there, that would have been huge for him. But uh, doesn't have it. It's probably just more trades now, huh? Oh, I don't yeah. like. Oh, okay. He's not making another land. Uh, do we take out... I guess we have to take out the Brigand. Is he looking at Hunt Down? I wonder. Yeah, Hunt Down's an option. 
But if Huntdown was the play, he would have played it last turn, right? Okay. Oh, that's actually kind of weak. Yeah, I guess we have the Mystic Beast on board, so we're not as worried, but... Ghost has some opportunities here. Yeah, that was our entire hand. Uh, huh. Not sure if I agree. Hunt down is just... It's so expensive, you know? It is. Free area. Zoni luckily finds another beast here to follow up. Second beast is really nice. Um, cannon carry coming down means that uh, he's not going to be able to get off a big detonate play. Because probably yeah. this Fugu goes right side. I guess if the cannon carry didn't come, so potentially goes left. I think I would have liked to see another buff here with the Overgrown Tower. Not sure though. Just to set up lethal, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Because uh, it doesn't really matter. Does it really matter? Because I mean, any sort of detonate plays. There's all. It's all like two damage sources. Uh, six HP is probably not going to matter as much. Nor is eight. Wait, why? We're building another mountain. Oh. Yes, it's a defensive I, boss. I guess we have to. Do we have to? That's only 11. Yeah, I mean. It's scary for sure. It is. Um. We really need Tower sustainable answers, though. You could take a cheeky tower to block the two, uh, four two from cr collecting here. Um. <laughs> that is pretty cheeky. And we're pretty much tempoing this game, I think. Yeah. It takes a clear here doesn't. It's not the worst place around detonate. Okay, it doesn't. Uh... <laughs> Tower last? <laughs> okay. Interesting, huh? Playing around um, two damage sources. Very interesting. Yeah, I mean, I think just setting up the two turn lethal there was fine. Yeah, either that or you answer the, uh, the mech, I guess. If you're really worried about the detonate line. Mm. Um, but end of the day, probably not going to matter. I don't think Ghost has tools to deal with all of this yeah. stuff. This would have been such a different game if uh, Ghost went for the opportunistic play instead of trying to control board. I mean, just, mm -hmm. you know, drawing into Flame Burst, Flame Burst, Cyphers Ra? That's a lot of damage to face. That is, yeah. And Zoni really had a bunch of awkward turns where he had hunt downs and towers and really only the Grizzly to work with. And I, I don't think Ghost was prized into, you know, playing all these, these uh, inefficient answers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with hunt down, like if you don't apply, uh, if you don't give your opponent decent targets, it's just going to be kind of dead weight sitting in hand. Yeah, but um, okay. that's a three zero. <laughs> that's a three zero. Zorni um, showing his expertise of the game uh, over Ghost in this matchup, and he is going to take the crown, move on to the finals of Kalima yeah, number two. Let's get there. But uh, well done by Ghost. Uh, like I said, I think he's a newer player, so. Uh, yeah. Hopefully. Well, and I can be harsh standard. sometimes. <laughs> but we're just commenting for the players to, so we all learn and grow at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a, a lot of these uh, lines aren't super intuitive necessarily as well. Also very true. Like we're we're speaking like it might be like simple, but it's very difficult to pick up on if you haven't played for a lot of hours. <laughs> Right, because you're learning a deck, and then maybe if you're learning Max, you had good experiences going for board in a lot of your games. Mm -hmm. um, 
Very getting true. to know the deck really in and out and knowing when to abandon the board game plan and instead you know go for something lustrous as the uh, cannon carrier into uh, aggressive development uh, that is really tough and if you're if you're playing for that out you even want to consider keeping things like uh, detonate in your opening hand and um, you know you really don't want to prioritize early game collection with the airbots yeah. if instead you can get those airbots into a good spot for the detonate or you can even develop them aggressive in one turn and you know utilize those mountains or that one mountain that you're likely getting if you're playing the carrier um, it's it's a lot more pressure well it's it's more pressure on one side of the ward and that's what you're trying to get at you're trying to you know, set up um, a line where you're potentially um, stronger for a couple of turns in, in one side of the field you know? yeah and it's it's pressure in the uh, uh... Uh, you may you might not be applying pressure immediately, but all of a sudden there'll be a huge amount of pressure, and you just yeah. me mechs. When you're playing for that game plan, it's all about that uh, that swing in power on one singular turn, rather than building yeah, it up yeah. gradually like most other lists play out. But okay, okay. I think we're still waiting Shall we on. Move on? The other semifinals match from Fickle. Uh, I'll show the oh, right, right. brackets. Yeah, so Fickle and Zarak are still bat battling it out, so we will take a small break. Uh, and when the finals yeah. match is ready, we'll let you know, and we'll be back then. So, okay. until then. Um, I also have to uh, leave in a couple of minutes. Oh, right, okay. Unless it's going to leave us. Yeah. Are we still on air? We are still on air. We are still on air, okay. We're still on air. But, so sorry, uh, chat. Well, Moon has to go along and provide excellent commentary, which I'm sure he will do. Uh, yeah, I'll be, be nothing but a lizard, too. though. <laughs> Aww. But <laughs> well, that's okay. We'll manage, and uh, Zorni will provide excellent gameplay for us in the meantime. Hopefully, hopefully. We have followed him all the way up to this point. So, uh, no favorites, but uh, <laughs> maybe we'll root for the other person then. <laughs> Too much favoritism here. All right, well, All right. we'll take a quick break, and uh, uh, thanks for joining Lizard. Appreciate the co comment. Pleasure. As always. Pleasure to be able to cast with you. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I'll see you in a bit, chat. All right. We are back, this time with the finals of Kaleem Open number 2, Zorni vs. Zarak. Let's take a look. We've seen all of Zorni's lists now. Zarak on the other end of the bracket. Um, looks pretty standard overall. We got Flyers, Monstrosity, probably. Red, Yellow, Angry, probably. And uh, Mono Red list, with five neutrals. Uh, so this could be Commands and Horsemaster, or... Yeah, definitely not going to be a rush with a Garridan. Uh, Garridan as a cover kind of gives away some information there. You might struggle, or you might uh, provide your opponent with some struggles to figure out what type of list this is. If it was just like a flame burst deck cover, uh, they might need to decide whether it's rush or simply mid range red. But the Garridan cover certainly. Um. It helps make that decision easier. So, Zorak locking in the band for mono red. I think that makes a lot of sense with a double yellow lineup. Red typically good against yellow. Uh, Zorni, gonna think about banning a yellow. Also makes a lot of sense. You've, he's got uh, double greens, which could be weak to the yellow. Um, and he may even predict the red ban here. Zorni's still thinking about it a little bit, though. I think you always go for a yellow ban. Um, and potentially, Zarak's match 
uh, could have been on Fickle Stream. Maybe Azornia watched the stream and knows exactly which list is which. But yep, just gonna lock in one of those yellows. And we're gonna lead with yellow, which makes a lot of sense. So, uh, the yellow list here isn't good against anything. I think that makes for a decent uh, scouting list. On Zarak's side, we probably see... Okay, also the yellow. I would have, I wouldn't have minded to see like angry or something. Yellow is a pretty good counter against the like green. Might want to hold it for that. Uh, red's a good counter against yellow, so hold that for the for this. Uh, but yellow start is also fine. So we'll see if this is either flyers or monstrosity. I think um, Monstrosity has a bit weaker a time against Flyers itself. Could go either way, but uh, Monstrosity itself is kind of a dead card in that matchup. Looks like it is the Monstrosity variant. We see a Mistral Guide and Deathwish Ghoul. Looks like the Lizard variant of Monstrosity. So it could go fine, uh, as long as we don't draw into Monstrosities as unideal moments. Uh, it could go fine. Both players staring each other down with their deserts. Uh, excellent starting hand from Zorni. Zorok's not got too bad a starting hand either. Ooh, and then Manta Rider pickup. We've got the Mistral Guide into Wind Soldier. Uh, Manta Rider, very excellent card into Flyer's Mirrors. Of course, Zorni also has his own Manta Rider though. Uh, so we might see the Manta Rider come down here. It's a bit sturdier than an air elemental. So Zorak has a couple options. We could fully clear left side, could ignore the Manta Rider entirely, go to right side, which I kind of like a little bit better. I think that's what's going to happen. And then probably develop the Manta Rider somewhere. Um, hovering Deathwish Ghoul. It's an option. I think I prefer the Manta Rider. Zorni's about to go on to four. Okay, going double collection to fight. I guess that's not awful. Zorni is going to four deserts though. Uh, Spirit Theft is one card to be wary of. Especially since this is now your only collector. This Mistral Guide was placed in the center. So if this dies, uh, that's a huge swing for Zorni, which looks like he doesn't currently have an answer, apart from the Flashwind, which I don't think he particularly wants to take. It's an option. Um, actually, kind of de of a decision here for Zorni. Uh, I mean, I don't mind just simply drawing. Because of that air alley, you could just go for a draw, and if you find the uh, Spirit Theft, it's a pretty good answer. Air alley plus Spirit Theft. But uh, Zarak not punished for the Greedy Ghoul. Pretty awesome. Uh, we also get uh, Fnatic here to clean up this ma uh, Manta Rider. Not too bad. Honestly, a pretty amazing start for Zorak here. We can Soul Drain the little 2-2 and play the Manta Rider still. Oof, big. Uh, Manta Rider has a potential to come in range. I think it's not awful. Um, this is only weak to double removal tools from a Flyer's list. So Soul Drain plus Spirit Theft or something. Um, and Zorni's 
not got a ton of cards. It's a it's a sizable chunk, but uh, so I mean, if you're worried about Soul Drain Spirit Theft, you could. But also, if there was a Spirit Theft in hand, he would have instantly played that on the Ghoul. So that's another thing to consider. So already drawing not the cards he's looking for. Uh, Zorax just got really efficient small bodies that have been getting really nice trades on these flyers. No safe places really for the... well there's some safe places but uh, there's no relevant safe places for things like Demon Wing. And goes for Aerially, makes sense. The 4 attack is all you need in this anyways. And we build to our 5 deserts. Champion, however, is going to be very strong. Uh, okay, we're going to use the training here. Pretty good. Pretty excellent. It says a lot of movement tricks used up from Zarak here. But uh, we establish a really nice setup here. Triple champions. Those are going to be a little bit slow, unfortunately. Zorni has really just needed like these small ping removal damages like so early on in the game and he hasn't found any, unfortunately. Uh, are we just going to clear the Fnatic, maybe? Kind of makes sense. This might honestly not be bad. Like I said, we've seen a lot of mobility tricks used out of Zarog. We see yet another mobility trick, but uh, not the one he's looking for to clean up this champion. But uh, because there's been so many mobility tricks, the champions are probably safe, and they're going to be able to wreak havoc on this board here, I think. Yeah, just drop another emissary, I think. That was a mistake. Oh yeah, he forgot to give it flying. <laughs> Whoops. Pretty nice blocks though from Zarak where uh, one mobility trick isn't going to allow him to collect and kill this Mistral Guide. But he probably did want these creatures swapped and the demon to have flying and probably the Emissary to block the Well Collection, maybe. Oh, sorry, that is still in one movement trick. I... I'm dumb. <laughs> Great um, champion placement. Of course, you have to play it in range no matter where you put it, but on left side, it just opens up the collection with the Manta Rider and the clear. Uh, this way, you're forcing either the Manta Rider to go back, relieve some pressure on face, uh, in order for Zorak to get the collection, or you're just simply denying this collection altogether. It's expensive. Ooh. Fair enough. We need to drop him to 8 life. That is, uh, that's pretty low. There's not a lot Zorni's gonna be able to do reactively to this. Twister? Not gonna really help. I think this may just be a straight up surrender. Or he's just gonna try. He's gonna try his best to defend, but I think it's probably gonna be in vain. And we found the mobility trick, the final one. Zark! Great top decks, great positioning. Going to take the mirror match, which I think he's very happy about because now Zorni's got uh, a Oh, he's only got one green list. I oh, know he's got both green lists, right? Yeah, he banned the red. Yeah, so monstrosity into double green. 
Uh, I think Zarek's very happy about this. Countering with beasts, that is the matchup that makes sense. Can potentially deal with monstrosities with um, hunt downs, though it's very expensive, but hopefully you can use that as a tempo swing into face as well. I also didn't see any monstrosities from Zarak in that last match, which is excellent. Like I said, don't really want to see monstrosity in a flyer's mirror. Both players full scooping. Azorni with kind of an awkward stalker here. Unless the Deathwish Ghoul comes down, that's alright, I guess. And the boar, some clunky draws here. Gonna go opposite side. <laughs> That's good. I think uh, you're not gonna really be able to fight. At least I wouldn't be super comfortable with fighting. with this hand at least. Uh, Zorni found a playable creature, it's an octopus. Probably hoping for something a little better, but we can also just take the stalker. Uh, try getting our lands a bit more aggressive. I suppose he's just got to decide on what land types he wants. I think it's fine to just go Forest and Stalker. I don't even necessarily need to play Octopus, but could play it as a Jumper, I guess, if you want. Or a 3-7. I guess with a Sunken Terror it doesn't matter, we're just playing this as an extra creature in case Stalker gets answered. So with Flash Wind in hand, might not be awful just to play a demon on left side here. Uh, there's a potential to tempo into face. The monstrosity is actually a little awkward in this tempo matchup as well. Especially since Zorni can kind of hold his buffs. So it's a, a lot more difficult for this demon to simply trade into something and then you get the stats right away. Mm. Uh, Sunken Tower is pretty nice here though anyways, we can just simply block the face space, so uh, training Flash one's not really an option. Uh, seems Seems like what would come down here. I don't think he's really pressured into doing too much else. Does get the boar. Oh, actually going boar center. Hmm. I don't know about the boar center. I think this is maybe not doing much, but I guess with a tower you can extend the reach of this a little bit more. Fair enough. And training, unfortunately, a little bit awkward to taking the trade on the octopus here. Only six power. Match Rider's a little better. Plays the Manta Rider in range. Suppose it doesn't matter too much. You get the creature to live. We are going for a training somewhere. 
Where's it going? Okay, we are collecting monstrosity value here. Uh, it's okay. I suppose he wants to also collect some stats on the Manta Rider here. Uh, Zorny with no hunt downs in hand, not gonna be able to easily answer this. Um, this Explorer also very important on the placement here. This allows Zorak to double neutral next turn and have a path to face with simply one movement trick. This guy doesn't get the flying. I think we've seen both trainings come down. Uh, did we? No, maybe just the one. Yeah, just the demon. So starting to take a draw, not the draw he's looking for. This monstrosity is going to make things a little awkward. So what's the play for Zorni here? It's really difficult. Uh, you can step back passively. If you're worried about monstrosity doing too many things, you can drop a creature. You could honestly just drop like a 5-5. Five five. Uh, and you don't mind so much with the hits. Move the monstrosity out of position, sure. Uh, moves it there. I think it's fine to move this out of collection, right? Because again, this doesn't have flying. I guess if you're worried about training, sure. Can go to face. But it's pretty unlikely this 5-5 five five gets answered, right? got five fairy only there's only so much he can do like you can go training plus flash wind into face plus trade this off but if you want to trade off the octopus that's so much oh really just gonna run away I guess Not entirely sure. So one issue that Zarak's going to find here is he's going to be trying to build up combo pieces, I suppose, building up these mobility tricks and more creatures to get the stats, uh, maybe playing for an OTK. Uh, but the issue is that Zorni also has Hunt Down, which will probably come in the future, uh, to just ruin his day. And uh, Zorni, meanwhile, is just setting up a lot of stuff here. Triple collecting on the wells, whereas Zarak is only single collecting. Uh, the monstrosity can be a pretty scary threat with just building up mass attack stats, but uh, if you're only collecting from one well, it's going to be a little less frightening. So I'd love to just see... Your only game plan here now can possibly be just the uh, OTK, so drop a demon down. Uh, would have liked the demon earlier. Okay. Uh, don't agree with that. He used a flash wind here, which I don't think was necessary at all. Uh, I'm not sure what that really accomplishes. Like, the Soctopus is already collecting. I don't think the Mystic Beast is really doing anything threatening. Uh, you can just stay on both these lands with the Demon and the Manta Rider. And maybe he's worried about, like, uh, movement shenanigans, Mystic Beast able to, like, move and clear this. But uh, realistically, if you cover both these lands, it's not really that likely. He's got to use a land trick and double neutrals, plus, like, a buff. Which is pretty unlikely on a three card hand because he's got to double neutral. Doesn't get to draw for it. Uh, and this just is. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he's also trying to protect the value trade on the demon. But 
using up that flashwind uh, is so huge. You you need the flashwind to go face. Like it's actually a necessary piece here. You need two mobility tricks at least. And the longer this game goes on, the more chances Zorni is going to be able to find answers to. It looks like Humbling Vision is going to come down here. Drop that down to a nice and safe 9 attack. I did find the second movement piece, but 10's not enough. Goes for Wind Soldier. I also don't think Wind Soldier is necessary here. Uh, I mean, you can go for it, relieve some pressure, I guess, but Manta Rider also is just fine. I think. What, that was like a 5 1? Five one. I guess the Manta Rider can get value traded, but here come the buff. Are we gonna see another humbling vision? I think Zorni is calculating whether he needs to play around this, and uh, it's possible. Oh, actually goes for the Grizzly. Grizzly plus the pre-buff. Interesting. Hmm. I don't know about the Grizzly there. Uh, I mean, you could have just hit face, right? It's likely there's an answer, I guess, with Soul Drain and such, but... Hmm. So, what Zarag needs here is uh, three more attack, which could have happened from the Fnatic. Uh, with a Fnatic plus Soul Drain, uh, you don't have enough area for that though, probably. Yeah. Well, Fnatic, he has to play double Fnatics plus the training plus the Soul Drain. He can collect one, so he'd need six, eight. Yeah, I think he was one short, even with the Soul Drain. Uh, heads up play, not pre-hitting the Manta Rider in here. That allows him to very sturdily block the space. Zarni really needs to find an answer to this monstrosity soon also. Uh, Zarek's building up some answers. That demon, thankfully, is not going to be able to trade off, since it's got four life into the three attack grizzly. So it's going to be uh, a little bit more difficult. Uh, we did find a wind soldier, though. Uh, is this a lethal? We still are using these. If we had flash wind, we'd have the lethal. Three. Yeah, see, <laughs> using up that Flashwind early is going to hurt. Uh, if we had that Flashwind right now, this would be lethal. Uh, Wind Soldier plus the Manta Rider makes 8 attack, and we got a free movement trick to face. Because right now, we still need those double mobility tricks to get this guy going face. Does Soul Drain help? Wait, 3, 4, 5, 6... That's going to be the lethal, right? Three... Yeah, there's a lethal here. I don't know if he sees it. Uh, so the lethal line here is uh, training this, fanatic this forward, use the natural movement to get the collection. Um, soul drain your own fanatic. This gives us 20 attack, and then you still have enough area for the... Oh, do you not have enough for that, maybe? 
Right, you still need the double fanatic that way. Yeah, ne never mind. We were on seven? Why did he soul drain there? Oh, just for healing? We were on seven. We needed six. Seven, eight. We needed nine. Yeah, I guess we didn't have enough. Okay. God, a humbling this. And we still need eight attack. It's gonna be a little more difficult. I th yeah, especially using up that soul drain. Um, soul drain could have been a little more useful later on. Thirteen. Like, we had another potential to sort of tempo here, where we just go face, get an extra proc maybe with the Fnatic. Uh, with the Soul Drain on a Fnatic again, once again. Uh, you'd only hit face for 16. Um, maybe produce an aggressive desert. You could also win Soldier the stalker or something three six nine uh, maybe you still can't do that because of soul drain yeah really rough it may have just come down to uh, missing that singular uh, flash win there Ooh. wait really Right. Ah, uh, that... That hurts so much. He used up his training, and that is probably the second and only training. Or, or, or last training in the list. So that's going to be really rough, because there's no more training potential to zip this face anymore. And I think Zorni's going to take the victory here. Say well played. Yep, and that's gonna be it. Gonna let Zorni just finish it. Bop bop, and there we go. So monstrosity less down. Zorni feeling pretty happy about that. Uh yeah, suddenly we've swung the other way around. Now we've got green lists staring down all of the, these double uh, red lists. So, very crucial matchups. These two yellows at the start, uh, which have both been answered, and I think Zorni is going to come out on top on that one. We still do have the angry, which can cheese out some wins, but I think generally the green lineup is going to be favored. Hopefully Zorni is ready. <clears throat> so we are countering with Mono Red. I think honestly mono red could cheese out a win against the mono green. I think it was reasonable to save that. I don't see any way really this list uh, a mono red can beat the beasts.
There's just too large of life stats. Bomb Slinger, if it's included, is okay at taking out uh, Grizzlies, but only okay. <laughs> Zorny again with mm, some expensive cards in hand. We got that Sunken Terror going. Uh, Zark, pretty nice stuff here as well, though. Especially against uh, a Tempo Beast. If the, I mean, if the Tempo Beast uh, wants to go down one side, you can go left. Looks like Zorni might actually consider going to the left side as well. Uh, it's an option, just because you probably outvalue the stats anyways. Even as a more tempo-oriented list, you just have so many stats to challenge the red, but... Um... Uh... With Mystic Beast in the list, I, I kind of like just going one side. We do have Sunken Tower to help with that, though, also in the future. But yeah, just going to go down one side with double neutrals. Be a little faster with our lands. Uh, hunt down, not hugely important in this matchup, or at least in the early game, early and mid game. Hunt down's not going to accomplish much. You don't want to be hitting into the combat creatures. And spending three Faria to do so. Goes for another mountain. Uh, Alright. I kind of preferred the double neutral. Even though we do have this Laia to build up to. Double neutral was kind of nice. Because now you're a little bit... You're going to be a little bit awkward with your lands. Here you're going to have to go for a mountain, like you you want a mountain on one of these two spaces. Uh, and then elsewise to make up this sort of three land formation to get to face you want double neutrals. And you really don't want to go double neutral and then mountain here. You want that axe grinder spot, an aggressive well spot anyways. Uh, this play just gets you one collection. One collection extra with the boss, which I don't think is hugely important. Uh, tempo's very important in this type of matchup. Boar is very nice here. Especially with this double neutral play where Zorni still needs that fourth forest. Uh, you can use this mountain against your opponent. Uh, Sunken Tower the Leia away if you want. You don't even have to. You probably want to though. So I was thinking about it a little bit. Uh, the boar trades pretty nicely into the Laia, but also if you tuck the Laia into the corner, it's just going to require even more land investment from your opponent. Um, and with already awkwardly built lands, uh, it's really going to harm Zarok here. Because uh, again, he needs double neutral to get to face, uh, which is reasonable, he can work with that, but as the Laia moves back, Oh, that's so many lands you need to build. Gonna drop a Grizzly. And here comes the Sunken Tower. Moving our back. Good. Yeah, and this is just gonna be really rough for Zarok. 
This liar, super out of position now. He's got to invest these neutrals somewhere. And he's choosing to bring the liar up. But honestly, Sorny doesn't really care. The damage has already been done with this land movement. Uh, if the liar moves into position, honestly, the boar can just hit into it. Oh, we're actually going to go for the clear here. Alright. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't even think about this for some reason, but that's kind of excellent. Uh, I, d I don't understand the neutral here, though. This can just be towered away, and now you're sitting in an awkward spot again. Uh, you just go one neutral up, right? But yeah, the Laia play is super clever. Taking the value trade on the Grizzly is honestly huge. I'm a little sad about this land, though. <laughs> So Zorni probably just draws, or is he thinking about using a teleport somewhere? We're doing a hunt down. Clear off this boss. Fair enough, I guess. Uh, we missed the boar, though. Which is a bit unfortunate. Oh? I think this might have been a misplay by Zorni here. Uh, unless this is where he wanted the board to be. Oh, I see. He's going to teleport and clear. Alright. Okay, fair enough. Zorni had a plan that I wasn't following. I like it. Brings all your creatures aggressive. That's a pretty clever line. All your creatures aggressive. Sets out the boar to trade into the tower next turn so that you can still be slapping face for seven next turn. And actually setting up... He actually sets up a three turn clock with this play here. Uh, because this tower can buff the octopus next turn. We slap once. Uh, um, bring him down to 8 life, this is on 7, and then we set up for next turn using the Overgrown Tower again, and that's just a lethal with the Octopus and a Scaling Tower. And the Sunken Tower, probably one of the best cards he could have been looking for there. Because he's already got a plan here, he just needs to have some disruption to prevent Zarak from dealing with this. And he even moves the poor Brigand back. Wait, he... Did he forget to buff? Okay, uh, I'm not sure why he didn't buff there, but maybe that was a miss. I, I mean, I guess you find it anyways with the Sunken Tower plus the boar. Fair enough, there's nothing much Zara can do about that, but... Optimal play would have been to buff. Alright, so Zarni taking game three. And we're gonna have to counter with Angry. Uh, we do have. We do have Demon Wings. Well, actually, I don't know what is in Zarek's list, so let's not assume anything. But if we have Demon Wings, those are pretty decent. There they are. There are the Demon Wings. 
Olin Ranger, a little bit awkward into the Stalker. Unless pre buffed. Trooper, not too bad. Zara gets the turn one Demon, and Zorni gets the turn one Grizzly. Both players pretty happy with that. Really important decision Zorni has to make here whether to fight sides or go opposite side. Uh, I think you can fight side with the Demon Wing, that's fine. Prevents it from just going off and becoming a double collector. Uh, Beast doesn't have great answers to just answering a Demon Wing on the other side of the board. You only have Hunt Down and you don't really want to be Hunt Downing this thing. Plays the Outland Ranger, does not respect the Stalker. So I think we're going to see a Stalker play here. Um, looking like a similar play to the previous series, where the Stalker is going to protect the beefy thing from the Demon Wing. And it's potentially going to be harder in this matchup to actually find Soul Drains for Zarak. Uh, might not run Soul Drain at all. Oh, actually going to switch things up though, bringing out the Deepwood Grizzly instead of the Stalker. Stepping back out of mobility range, looks good. Looks like probably just a step up and pass. I guess Octopus is fine. More stats. Now their Demon Wing is good. Double neutrals. Hmm. Uh, this is so many lands. <laughs> we might have the, uh, I get the idea. I want to get this Firebringer aggressive, but if we look at the lands required to get this thing aggressive, we need this double neutral, we need another double neutral, and a mountain. That is three entire power wheel usage, usages. Ah, so expensive. And it's just going to be really awkward with how we have to build these lands too. Uh, Imperial Trooper aggro would be okay with like double neutral, but then you're going to have to step onto your mountain that you want to build there. It's just really awkward overall. And now goes for the draw. Hmm. I think if your game plan was to invest the double neutrals, you should probably go all in on it. Just double neutral again, drop aggro trooper. It's going to be really hard to defend now that this has been invested. Yeah, the second mountain is going to be so awkward. Thankfully for Zorak, there's no sunken tower in Zorni's hand. That would have been pretty devastating. Ah, oh, there are there are soldiers in the list. Nice. Not going to be very helpful here, but nice. <laughs> So yeah, this can be a tough thing about the red, yellow, angry list. I think we discussed already before, but knowing when to 
invest lands and when not to, because a lot of your creatures require things like Firebringers, but I think just hoping for the, I think, uh, right, we haven't seen Zarax list, but just hoping for some charge three element to zip your flying creatures onto enemy lands and then produce the aggro mountain that way is hugely more efficient than simply double neutraling all the way to your opponent's orb. You could do this plan if you just ignored one side entirely, just invest all your lands left. Uh, it's still a little awkward though. Like the deserts and mountains just really don't play nice in the angry list. You really gotta be careful of where you're placing them. Going for this land again, uh, I'm not sure. This land is very bad, in my opinion, into this matchup. It's just so weak to Sunken Tower. Whereas this land up here, I mean, you're maybe setting up, you're trying to set up a Horse Master, but it's so weak to the... Like, you really don't care about the Horse Master. It's just so weak to uh, Sunken Tower. Okay, we got seven fives. I don't think this is going to be big enough. Can defend with an Outland Ranger. Uh, boost these to eight, six. Not awful. Yeah, I don't mind just dumping an 8-6 here. With a defender, it's not the end of the world now. 8-6 uh, can do work. And then we can set up a collector. Free hate seat. Nom. Considering double camp firing, I think that makes sense. It's a little bit expensive, but... And goes for the soldiering. Uh, so one campfire plays out a range of Stalker. The second campfire just allows you to not get value traded by these five lifes. Uh, you are going to lose one value from simply the Octopus hitting in, but kind of have to do it that way. And now here, Zarek has to invest another land. <laughs> that is one, two, three, four power wheel usages. And I don't know if Zarek's going to be able to deal. Honestly, he should have held on to the Soul Drain. Uh, Soul Drain was pretty important to not die. We do, of course, see the Guidance in hand, but... Uh, it played to as many outs as possible. You see that there's an obvious two-turn lethal setup from Zorni here. On board. So just play around that by holding on to the Soul Drain so you can heal out of range of that at least. Don't have many opportunities to top deck another soul drain because you have to invest this land. Oh, we're actually just gonna see the buff anyway, so it, maybe it doesn't matter. Oh, but the buff comes down here. Mmm, so soul drain would have been doing work. Though with the humbling, maybe it doesn't matter because you yourself can't even set up two turn lethal, unfortunately. Uh, with the Wind Soldier, that works, right? Yeah, right, so the Mystic Beast is surviving though, I guess. So yeah, Soul Drain wouldn't be saving you. Uh, it saves you if you can deal two damage. But the thing is, on that last turn, Zorni could have just double neutraled and blocked with that Stalker. So the reason you had to uh, Soul Drain like another target is because that Stalker had one HP. So you can only drain that one HP, which is just not enough. And Zorni's going to take it. He's going to take Kalim open number two, first place. So well done by Zorni. Um, sweeping this tournament and the last. And that's going to be it, but well fought by Zorak. 
Zorni is a very difficult player to beat. The seasoned veteran, as I mentioned earlier. So, thanks everyone for watching. It was a great tournament to see some new faces and some new faces coming into the semifinals. Uh, very exciting. Always love when I see new faces in the game, but also new faces doing well in tournaments. So, congrats to all of those players. That is definitely an accomplishment when there's players like Zorni in the tournament. Alright, so I'll see you guys next time, and uh, until then.